Buju Gakkina Uya Inoa. This is Kino Gijuk. We're at the Red Lake School District, and we're going to do a grammar crash course in Ojibwe language. We're going to show you two years of college grammar in four days. And it's going to be tough. It's going to be rough. But the way it's rough, the tough get going. <laughs> what movie was that? Some army guys with. Uh, now, here we go. So here's the, uh, if you want to go to Red Lake School District and you find language and culture and click on it and go to more resources, this document is there. Uh, it's going to be a four-day training and it is like six hours each day. And we're going to work on basically three things. We're going to work on this document that's on our website and it's down, downloadable. And uh, we're going to work with... Uh, the Ojibwe People's Dictionary. Go to the internet, Ojibwe People's Dictionary. So with this document that I just showed you and this web page, we're going to learn how to use both of them to create complex sentences, meaning uh, there's a main clause and a subordinate clause, and we'll get into that. Don't worry, any of these words that I'm saying, we will teach it later on in the four days. So so don't let the smooth taste fool you, okay? Uh, and the other, another document that we will be using is uh, just some for taking notes. So, and and you might see this every now and this is my, uh, this is this is my roadmap of what I'm going to teach day one. We're gonna we're gonna work on vowel sounds, but we're gonna we'll we'll skip it because when we're doing stuff, we'll be working on vowel sounds. And uh, first thing I want to teach you is uh, verb types. All right, and that's the biggie. In your brain, when you're thinking in Ojibwe, you got to make some decision, decisions real quick. You got to decide what kind of verb am I going to use. There are four kinds of verbs in Ojibwe, and we're going to learn how to use them four different ways. Each verb, four different ways. There's uh, VAIs, when it's just a person not doing anything to anybody, or VTA, when you're doing something to someone, and there's a VTI when you're doing something to something, or VII when the thing's doing it, uh, but not doing it to anybody. And uh, uh, so in your brain, you got to figure out which one of the four do I want to use. And then there's four different ways you can use it in a command, independent, form, conjunct, form, or change conjunct. And uh, don't worry trying to uh, keep this all down. Don't take notes. I don't want you to take notes because you'll be busy trying to catch up. What did he say? What did he say? Instead of being in the present. Uh, no notes. That'll cost you extra money. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Ojibwe is free. Uh, uh, so we should be able, we're gonna, your brain's going to take four verb types and use them four different ways. So that means it's one uh, command, and then uh, con conjunct, and then independent. And then a uh, conjunct change, and we'll explain those in a bit. But so it's four different ways to use first one, four different ways to use the next one, four different ways to use the other verb type, and four to use the other one. So it's how many is that? Sixteen. There's sixteen conjugations, uh, basically, that you need to master to to speak the language. What that's what your brain is doing. So here's uh, and. and uh, First of all, you need to decide, you know, is it a transitive verb or an intransitive verb when you decide which of the four it is. So I'm going to explain transitive and intransitive. You guys can see my mug up there, right? So if you can't see it from back row, you can see it up there. And, and I think I have a big enough mouth for you to hear me. All right. If you can't hear me, say, I can't hear you. Speak up. Uh, and I'll speak up. So. Transit, so some verbs have subjects. Subject is the one doing it. And hold on for a second. Did you take like uh, Tony's class? They said yes, 
Oh, no, I never did. Um, you know, Gizek was my teacher. Oh, right? he was. Yeah. Yeah. No, two thousand nine. Gago, Baba, mean the gain in got a shaggy way. No, just kidding. Don't worry, I'll be back. I don't even know if that's the right word for it. But anyways, you need to uh, decide if it's a transitive verb or not a transitive verb. So. In verbs, there's verbs have subjects, and they may or may not have objects. A subject and object. For instance, you could say, I'm hungry. I'm not talking about what I'm hungry, or I could say, I'm, I'm eating. There's a better one. I'm eating. The subject is I. Or I could say, you are eating. The subject is you. Subject is the one doing it. And uh, uh, it could say, she's eating, he's eating, we're eating, but not you, we're eating, including you. But if I want to say, I'm eating it, now there is a object. So you do need to know the difference between subject and object. Subject is the one doing it. Object is the one having it happen to them. I am eating candy. I think they're in it. Anyways. Uh, uh, or you could say, I am eating pancakes. I am eating pancakes. Well, pancakes are animate, so I have to switch the verb to a moi. In the mwag, gwiki wave in the gunuk. I am eating pancakes. So there's a subject and an object. So a transitive verb, see, see right now with my hands out like this, subject and object? I make the letter T. Uh, Albert T. No, you know, Asia T. I'm making the letter T. So that means transitive. There's a subject and an object is transitive. The action of the object transfers on to the subject. I see her. I like it. Uh, but uh, if it doesn't, some of verbs can not have an object. So they're intransitive. They're not the letter T. They're not transitive. They're called intransitive. So you could say, uh, I am hungry. I am tired. I am smart. I am dumb. I am go go pardis. I am uh, mindawe. You could say nim mindawe stuff like that. Yeah, I, I you could say I am, but I'm not doing anything to anybody, so it's not transitive. So that's the difference between a transitive verb and an intransitive verb. Intransitive means there's no object, just the subject. Subject, no object. But if it's transitive, then there's an object. Any questions? repeat that so the subject is the one doing it the, yep the subject is the one doing and the object is the one that's having it done to him it's kind of kind of sounds backwards because in our mind what's the subject what am i studying what subject can i study it seems like the subject would be the doe but it's not um uh, subject is the doer object is the doe subject does it to the object so if there's a subject and an object then it's transitive verb because that it transfers on to an object. That's what transitive, it transfers. Uh, uh, like I pay him, uh, I like it, uh, I am making it green, I'm painting mm. it green, I'm painting him green. That's a transitive. The subject is the doer, the object is the doe. Now, that's... When you look at this uh, um, circle here, that's the, your brain has to make the first decision. Is it transitive or intransitive? Does it have a subject but no object or a subject and an object? Then you got to decide which one is. So let's look at some of these. And I drew little pictures on here so it makes it easier to kind of kind of see it. So like a subject will be a person and they're not doing anything to anybody or anyone uh, a VAI I'm sorry VAI verb that's animate the subject is animate but it is an intransitive verb and uh, we're gonna we're gonna come across this many times so don't worry about having it down at the moment um, verb animate intransitive here's an example she is sleeping she is uh, early she is on time She's not doing anything to anybody else. She's just being the subject, minding her own business, thinking she's thinking, she's tired, she's hungry. 
uh, whatever, not a gazillion things that you could say about she or he. In Ojibwe, it's she or he. There's no gender difference. Anytime you say hungry, it means she's hungry or he's hungry. It means both of them at once. Uh, so that's a VAI. So let's look at something that's intransitive, meaning there's no object. Uh, just the subject, something that's in a a box, a box. What can it do? What can a, a what kind of verbs can a box do? A box could be old. It's an old box. It's a new box. Uh, it's a it's a crunched up box. It's uh, uh, it could be a big box. It could be a little box. It could be an expensive box. It could be a cheap box. I do not like green eggs and ham, Sam. I do. <laughs> but. Uh, so the box can do, it can be brown, it can be orange, it can be yellow, but it's not doing anything to anybody else. So that's a verb that's inanimate and intransitive. There, there's only a, like, there's only like four, there's only going to be like eight words you got to know the linguistic terminology. One is V-I-I, V-A-I, V-T-A, V-T-I. And the other one is uh, uh, imperative, which means command, independent conjunct or conjunct change those are the only eight you really need to know to navigate mm -hmm. and uh should we take a break already is your so guys's brains really already tired just saying that for the v -I -I, um, that you're just describing it yeah yep okay. yep yeah, yep and it's not doing anything to anybody else okay, okay. uh now with artificial intelligence i don't know how that works in here well, beside the point, let's look at VTAs, verb transitive animate. Okay, uh, that's when somebody or something is doing something to someone, but clearly, whatever it's, the, the object is clearly animate. So the subject could be a box or a person. The box smashed him. The box fell, the, the box fell down and smashed him. But him is obviously animate. So, could you say I kicked the box? So then, then we go over here to VTIs. I am a person. I am the subject, and I kicked. What did I kick? Box. I kicked the box. That would be a transitive on the inanimate object. Subject is the one doing it. Object is the one having it done to him. Subject, object. Because my, my English teacher always said, subject, verb, subject, verb. Remember that when you're writing uh, for college, just always remember every sentence should have a subject and a verb in it. And some of them have objects as well in the sentence. So let's continue here. He, she kicked him. He kicked him. Uh, he smashed him. The box smashed him or he smashed him. It doesn't matter the subject. In these three letters, we're not going to talk about who or what did it, but we know for sure the object is animate. Whatsoever is having it happen to them is clearly animate. And whoever's having it happen to them over here in the VTI, verb transitive uh, inanimate object, is the box. So I lifted the box, I bought the box, I sold the box, I dropped the box, I kicked the box. You could say the big box smashed the little box, uh, yeah, yeah, like that, stuff like that. All righty. I'm going to go around the room and I'm going to ask you. Oh, no, I'm going to give you sentences and you're going to guess. Is it VII, VAI, VTA, or VTI? And we're going to start with the back row first. The back row. You're going to tell me, is this sentence, it's going to have a subject and a verb, and it may or may not have an object, but all of these have a subject. All four of them have a subject, but only two of them have an object. So I'm going to say, uh, um, I see it. Uh, well, we don't know what it is, though. Okay, we're, from now on, it means inanimate, okay? Okay. So we can't say I see it. I can't see the rhinoceros. We can't say I see it. We're going to have to say I see him or her because it's going to be a male or female rhinoceros. All right. All right. Uh, uh, middle row. So wait, were we right? Uh, wait a minute. Ask your partners. Was she right? You guys are going to be team back there. She we said right. VTI. We were right. <laughs> it was right. It is VTI. I forgot the sentence already. I see it. 
uh, inanimate thing. Okay, uh, uh, middle row, middle row, um, I see her. Which one is that? It is, a, and, and, and do you guys agree? I see her. Okay, I see a lot of thumbs up. Okay, hold your thumb up if you think she's correct. All right, it's a unanimous. I see her. She is animate. The verb transfers onto something that's animate. And here we go. Subject is I, her is object. So the A in this one just means the object. All right, um, front row. It is night time. It is night time. This is a trick question. It is night time. Is it a V I I V A I V T A V T I? Here's here's a hint. I don't see any verb intransitive inanimate. Verb intransitive inanimate. Uh, all right. Yeah. Thumbs up if you guys think she's right. Here's the and the majority are thumbs up. And there's many abstaining, but <laughs> it is the clue when you say it. From now on, it means inanimate, okay? And she or he or a person is animate, all right? Got to watch out, though, because in Ojibwe, some things are animate that uh, in non-Indian world, it's not. For instance, a drum. A drum is considered animate in Ojibwe culture because his it's grandpa or grandma. We call him grandpa or grandma. We talk to our drums, and uh, sometimes if we talk enough to our drums, the drums start talking back to us. In our dreams, they'll come visit us and say, uh, hey, you need to quit behaving that way. <laughs> you need to start, <laughs> start behaving. Uh, uh, or they might teach you a really beautiful song or teach you some drum teachings. The closer you stick to drums and talk to them, the more they'll talk back. So drums are animate. Our tobacco is animate. Uh, because it carries our prayers. We talk to our tobacco. We talk holding our tobacco. So those would be VTAs. And drums would be T VTAs. You would have to say, I see him. I see the drum. I see her. Uh, uh, some things might be inanimate. So here's an interesting cultural concept. A stick from on a branch. A stick on a branch is animate when it's in the tree. If it falls on the ground and it's laying there, it becomes inanimate. But if you go pick it up and use it as a counting stick for ceremony or game, it becomes animate again. So it could be a VTA or VTI. It could be a VII or a VAI. So if there's a tree on the on the, uh, if there's a tree a stick on a tree and I said she is brown, what type of verb is that? She is brown. She is brown. Is she doing anything to anybody else? Okay, I hear two different ones. Is, is there? A, here's the question: Is there a subject and an object? The que she is the subject. Is brown? Is she doing anything to anybody? Just being brown, mind her own business, being brown. All right. Hi, Ariana. <laughs> Me, I'm. I'm busy being light brown, Most, mostly light because I'm I'm full blooded whiter. That's why they got to change their role so I can become a full blood. Here we go. I'll be I'll be full blood because a little more than half Irish. No, I'm just kidding. German. German. Uh, she is brown. Uh, that's a V A I. She's just minding her own business, being a twig on a tree, and then uh, all of a sudden uh. uh a uh, 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 big clumsy uh, 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 apple picker comes by and grabs an apple, knocks the branch, the little twig on the ground. She lands on the ground. Now it's no longer she. She went, ah, she hits the ground and fades away and uh, goes back into the spirit world. Now, it is brown. Which one is it is brown? Is that a V-I-I -I or a V-A-R, V-T-A or V-I-T-I? It is brown. The, the stick, yeah, the stick that's laying on the ground. 
A V. Okay, raise your hand if you think it's a VII. I mean, a thumbs up for VII. A VII? It. That's the hint. It means it's inanimate. And it's not doing anything. It is brown. Oh, it's inanimate. Yeah. Okay, I'll go. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, Becky comes along and says, you know, I'm going to use this for counting in my baguette game. And she puts tobacco down and says, I'm going to use you in baguette game. Thanks for helping out. And she picks it up and it becomes animate. Now, I'm going to change the verb. We're talking about the stick. It is used. Uh, that's kind of, kind of a, it is used. Or it is useful. There we go. Better. It. Oh, no, 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 no. She is useful. Little twig became animate. She is useful. Now, it kind of hints at an object, but there's no clear object. It's, so, she is the subject, is useful. So, we know it's animate. She, I didn't say it. I said, she is useful. Did I say she's using it or she's using him? No, it's not transitive. I didn't make the letter T. I didn't make the letter T, all right? So it's, it's not transitive. It's intransitive. She is useful. So it's a, a what? V-A-I. The, and the reason why it's a VI because I said she. You said and, stick was, oh, now, I said a stick could be animate or could be inanimate, and it could become animate again depending on what you're doing with it. If it's if it's growing and alive on the tree, it's animate. If it falls on the ground and it's been there for a year or two, it's inanimate. Even after two years, if you pick it back up and use it for for a ceremony or a game, uh, uh, it becomes animate again. If you use it for a, a reason. Uh, uh, like a counting stick, and then it uh, becomes animate again. So that's VAI. The stick's not doing anything to anybody. It's just sitting there being useful, being helpful. All right. Uh, it's being. It's being, yep. And so I'm going to kind of take my time on this because uh, this is the decision that you have to make, the very first decision you got to make when you want to say something in Ojibwe. Is it animate? First of all, is it transitive? Mm -hmm. Am I doing something to someone or is it doing something to someone? Or am I doing it to something? Like, I, am I eating it? Here we go. Blueberries are Ooh. inanimate. Remember this. Blueberries are inanimate and raspberries are animate. Why? Because they were messing with us 2,000 years. Here's what my language teacher said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's why. Here's why blueberries are animate. I know the answer to this. It's an age-old question, and I have the answer. Why are blueberries animate, inanimate and raspberries animate? Because long time ago, Nanabuja sat up in a tree scratching his one whisker. <laughs> and he said, I shall make blueberries inanimate and raspberries oh. animate just to mess with those guys that are going to have a professional development in 2024. <laughs> but then, okay, I'm going to argue this. Yep. They are living. And not after you pick them. There's life force in them still. But, but if I didn't pick them, then they would be animate. Uh, or an animate. Not in no Ojibwe world. <laughs> So the question. Yeah, you just gotta say. Mm, that's what it there you go. Things that make you go. Mm. So <laughs> there is no rule. There, there is no rule in Ojibwe for deciding which is animate or inanimate. It's a uh, uh, evolution. If you go to Canada, they're gonna say potatoes are, I believe, inanimate. But in the U.S., potatoes are animate. They say inanimate. We say animate. They say tomato. We say tomato. No, they say tomato. We say tomato. <laughs> So uh, there's really no rule for animacy. Uh, here's how I find out. I look it up in the dictionary. Let's find out if potatoes are animate or inanimate. So I go to the dictionary. Woohoo! Here we go. And uh, I click on English because I don't know. I don't even know how to spell potato. Now, the question is, are potatoes, and they spell it with a, look at it. There's... 
Oh yeah, okay. No, Potato. Okay. It says Nana Buju a long time ago. No. <laughs> it says noun animate. So I'm gonna click on it to get a better look at this. Here's the plural. P L stands for plural. Uh -huh. Openique. Potatoes are animate. And this is the Minnesota dictionary. So if we want to know what the majority of Minnesotans think potatoes are animate or inanimate, we go to this dictionary. And here's how you tell the golden rule. If the plural ends in the letter G, it's animate. All right. That's a that's a good cheat. You can write that one down if you want. Put that in your book. <laughs> If it ends in G, it's plural. If it ends in G, it's, if the plural ends in a G, it's animate. So let's look up blueberry. Okay. See if GNU is full of beans or full of blueberries. Yes. Oh, that's not how you spell beans. Yes. How do you spell beans? No, beans. Yes. I'm, I'm all messed up. Okay, it says it's now an animate. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm looking for a. Ras, raspberryian. No, raspberry. Okay. Gnu said raspberries were animate. There it is. Now an animate. But let's look at the plural. The plural. There it is. Plural, is ends in the letter G. If it ends in the plural of the noun ends in the letter G, it's animate. Should we see if men are animate? No, just kidding. <laughs> Some people want to know. Okay, that's raspberry. So we're going to go to blueberry. Uh, and this is a really uh, a really important question. Uh, uh, here's uh, the plural right there. Blueberry, the plural, the plural is... Uh, N ends in an N. It is not the letter G. It's either an N or a G. N stands for not animate. G stands for gagetsago. It's animate. Animate plural ends in a G. Inanimate plural ends in an N for nouns. Uh, you don't have to memorize that. We'll get to it later. But this is how I know. So let's let's go back to uh, this map here. And we're going to say, and this is what we call the Hitchhiker's Guide to universe and uh, we're gonna say I want I want to eat blueberries I want to eat blueberries and the problem is first of all let's go back let's make a decision Let's make a decision. Uh, I want to eat blueberries. We not found out blueberries were inanimate, right? Blueberries are inanimate. So which kind of verb am I going to use for I want to eat them inanimate blueberries? VTI, because the object, the object is inanimate. I want to eat inanimate blueberries. All right. So I'm going to go to the dictionary. Nah, this is very important because. Uh, well, we're going to look at all of our verb options. Oh, man, look at this. There are one, two, three different kinds of eat. And we said we needed what type of verb? Do we need a VTI? VTI. Yeah, not a VTA. I want to eat him. Or she, she's eating. Yeah, we need to use Mijin. Let me go back just to show you that because that is that is so cool. Eat eat it. See, there's eat, she's eating, we see each, but it doesn't have an object. It's a verb animate intransitive. She's just eating. But when you eat someone animate, it's a VTI. I mean sorry, VTA. But we wanted the one that says eat it. And so that's me just I'm gonna click on it so I can get some more uh, clearance uh clarification uh i eat it one singular there Let's see if you got some examples eater i don't eat meat 
Gawin wias ninita. I'm not good at eating meat. I don't like eating meat. Meat's inanimate. I eat candies. Oh, they're all inanimate because these are inanimate examples. Nimi janan. That means you eat more than one. That's the plural. I eat them, guys. Instead of I eat it, I eat them inanimate. Uh, uh, we'll get to that. We won't have to worry about it right now. So I do know I need to use mijin. So let us create a sentence. Okay. I want to eat. And you don't have to worry about knowing all the stuff that's in here. I want to eat. I want to eat eat. I want to eat blueberries. And they're, they're uh, blueberries are inanimate. So the word is mijin. So in my mind, I'm going, I want to, because I memorized all these parts. And I got to remember, I'm going to eat more than one blueberry, so I'm going to pluralize it. And mean is one blueberry. And this is blueberries. I want to eat it. Inanimate, plural. I want to eat them. Blueberries. I want to eat blueberries. There it is. Ta-da. But the thing is, I had to make a decision. Am I going to use the VAI, the VTA, or the VTI? The VAI, the VTA, or the VTAI. Was the object animate or was the object inanimate? Whew. That's a lot, huh? So how do you say that? Ne oh, let's go back. Let's practice. Hey, here's a good opportunity, a learning opportunity. Let's work on some vowels. Let's say, say the letter single A. Say uh. uh -huh. Repeat after me out loud. Everyone say uh. uh. Double I says e. Say e. e. Uh. E. E. Uh. E. E. Uh. E. Uh. E. Uh. E. Uh. E. Uh. E. E. Uh, e. Uh, e. E. Go like this. Uh, e. 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 Just kidding. Say, uh, e. Do that. Say, uh, e. 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 Now we're going to, uh, if the word's really long and it's too hard to uh, spit it out, you just start in the back. Say, none. None. Say, me, none. Me, none. Uh, say, none. None. Jin nun, me jin nun, me jin nun, me nun, ne we, ne we, me jin nun, me nun, ne we, me jin nun, me nun. I want to eat rasp. Berries. So, the singular I is a short I. The singular I is a short, and it makes I. Yeah. The double I is makes the E sound. A, uh, E, a, uh, E. So maybe I should. Uh, so sorry, is that for most of the it's double letters? The in the um. So like, if it's double A, is, is that a short A or A? Uh, let me see. Should be seven of them. Seven balls. This this is uh, uh above. And uh, you can find these on the net. Uh, these ball sounds. Uh, if and uh. He doesn't say, Luke, I am your father. He says, no, I am your father. Uh, oh. There. Oh, I 
I found the I found the uh, key key to a Dubai part of speech. Yeah. Oh, and I'm missing the letter E, as in e. cafe. It's not pronounced cave. All right. There's the double vowels. There's only seven of them, and four of them we already know. We already know single I, I, O. Skip down the bottom. A is kind of kind of uh, remote, but we know it. We know the A sound. The only ones where that are new is uh, double A, double I, and double O. Ah. And ah is a long sound, so we're going to say those long and drawn out and dramatized. Father. And uh, uh, bean, double I makes the E sound. E. I don't know why they did that. Double O is oo. Cool. And uh, E makes the A sound like in cafe. So everyone repeat after me. Say, say, uh. <coughs> Uh, say above. above. Say it. If. 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 Oh. Open. 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 Ah. ah. Father. Father. E. e. Bean. E. Ooh. Ooh. Cool. cool. A. A. Cafe. Cafe. All right. And as we go along, we'll practice them again. Uh, the short walls. Question. question. So, like, typically, like, you say pink witch, but with the E, you should really say pink witch. It should be me witch, but we kind of get kind of like me witch, me witch, it's me witch. Guich is the correct, but it's been kind of worn out, kind of roughed off. The water hits the mountain and erodes the mountain. Same with me, Guich, kind of got eroded into me, Guich. So we should either switch the E or start saying it, Guich. Yeah. Either way, it's a good point. Me, Guich. Me, Guich. Of course, you'd sound funny if you walked around, oh, me, Guich. And they're like, Where's, where'd you get the bohemian accent on? <laughs> yeah. Me. Yeah, me goich. Me saguna goich. Yeah. All right. So the double ball system was created in Cass Lake. So uh, because uh, the Mocha Um Ministry Church around Mission Corner, Mocha Um Church published dic uh, Bibles to uh, apostolize the Indians. And they would take them, their, their main uh, sales are in the fly-in areas of Canada. Above the highway, Trans-Canadian Highway, you got to fly in, no more roads. You go in there, they all speak Ojibwe. And there's no, no drums or pipes. There's just the uh, Bible. And uh, the problem was there was so many different spelling systems. In English, a vowel can have seven different sounds. And so too, it was too confusing and too hard to have people read the Bible in Ojibwe. So they switched it to a double vowel system. So the one letter makes one sound. Instead of in English, one vowel makes several sounds. Each Ojibwe vowel makes one sound and that's it. And my, uh, uh, my buddy, Bob Jardine, uh, I'm name dropping on my YouTube channels here. Uh, he said, uh, or mine and Wes's and, uh, he said now the double vowel system works pretty good. He said, but it doesn't quite capture the O's. The O's are the the the, the short O can set the O sound can be said long or short. O open O no O could be O O and O could be O O. He he said uh, the the rest of it's pretty darn good. And my old buddy Johnny Mitchell. He said, I didn't like that double ball system, but you know what I come to realize? The double ball system is the best thing for language learners. It's the best thing for our kids. That's the best we got. And uh, so there's a lot of people hate it because they don't know how to read it. But then once they start getting it, they say, that's a good thing. So we'll, we'll keep working on it. Let's do it again. Say, it. everyone say, uh, uh, I, oh. Now the short, these are called the short balls because they're not double balls. Uh, the short balls are said, you get supposed to say them as short as you possibly begin. Like I'm a teacher, so I say, 
I say words like mi guech or we sin ni, but that's not real language. Ojibwe language, it'd be we sin it. It goes much faster. Let's let's see if uh, uh, let's look up the word we sin it. Let's see how it's really said. Cause I'm a language learner. I'm not a first speaker. Here's a uh, what's um uh, what's Anna's uh, maiden name? Greenleaf. So this is her sister uh, Rose. Rose Tainter Greenleaf. And here's the sound. We sin it. We sin it. See, and I'll say we sin it, but it's a we sin it. And in, in, in Ojibwe, the last syllable is articulated. You'll start out slow. We sin it. We sin it. Listen to her, how she she accents the last syllable. And there's a reason for it. We sin it. Okay. The reason you accent the last syllable is because there's a whole bunch of information at the end of the word. If I said, we sinne, that means him, one person is eating. If I said, we sinne wug, we sinne wug, that means there's a whole bunch of people eating. Uh, and if I said, like, we sinne yun, that means when you're eating. No, don't, don't worry about it, we'll get into it. And if I said, we sinne it, so you got to articulate the last syllable because it, it tells a lot of information on the last syllable. So Ojibwe, Nice and smooth. And you got to remember, a long time ago, there wasn't ambient sounds and loud stereos and cars. It was very quiet, and you could talk soft. And and we would talk, and this is what my buddy told me. He said, we talk real soft because we are active listeners. We weren't busy waiting to figure out what we're going to say when they get done talking. We would listen. We we're active listeners. Listen to the whole story. When the whole story is done, then you start to think if you have how you want to respond. But we were active listeners, so we would talk real soft. But that last syllable is said. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, let me find another. Let's 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 go with a longer word. This has got to be a longer word, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it it is the longest word but I can make one longer than that. <laughs> you could pluralize this and it would be a longer word. Or you could say it's our blueberry pies. Then it would be, you have to put ge in the front and na nig on the back. That would make it really long. Our blueberry pies. Did you like our blueberry pies? Oh, here we go. Here's Eugene, the master Okay, you guys repeat after him. <laughs> okay, this will be a good one to practice our vowels on because there's so many of them. There's a song that. We turn it into song so it's easier. Yeah, it's on YouTube. The, the Blueberry Pie song in Ojibwe. All right. Uh, anyways, point being, uh, we're going to start listening to them real closer. Uh, can you guys hear it? It's kind of soft. Okay. I'm going to try to figure out how to turn this up. I'm going to go up to the screen and see if I can crank it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's too loud now. Let's see if it's too loud. All right, repeat after him. Okay, back row, all of you guys together. All right. All right. Now, when you listen to him, uh, short balls. Listen to the short balls is the, the single the singles. I want you to look at these letters. Well, we'll practice them and then we'll go back because we'll have more practice with them. And uh, so we're going to say bread, say ba kwe jit gun. Say blueberry, say mean. Say bursting, uh, bursting berries. Mean is a berry. Bosch can mean as a bursting blueberry. You boil them, they start bursting. Bosch is like exploding. Bosch, give me an exploding blueberry, and I don't know what this Sugani part is, but we're going to just, oh, gun is a thingamajigger. Yep. 
Yeah, Sagini. Yeah. And then in between is B2. And then uh, C means you lay it down. And G means you do it to it. You're laying it down. It's laid down in between. And gun means thingamajigger. Apparatus. Now, the, that you, the thing you lay down in between, that lays down in between bread, because there's two layers of bread. So it says blueberry, exploding blueberry sauce uh, laid down in between bread. And uh, uh, repeat after me, say, uh, say gun. Yeah. Say je. Yeah. Say uh, kwe. Bakwe. Uh, say ne. Yeah. So back up, say ba kwe je gun. Say a. a. Say a. Uh. Say i. A. I. A. I. A. Long wall. Hold your thumbs up and go a. A. Yeah, the long vowels are said long. A. Say, uh, short vowels are said as short as you can. Say a. Uh. Hey. 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 Oh, that's my higher power. That's my wife. No, just kidding. 855. Oh, that's, uh, I have to call him back. Repeat after me. Say, uh, uh, eh, eh, uh, uh, je gun. Say gun. Say gunne. Jigane. Sijigani. So we're going to try to say these short ones real fast. Say, let's see if we can say them real short. Sijigani. See if, see if he says Sijigani. Oh, that's too fast. Okay. But you're going to say the short balls as short as you can, and the long balls are going to be drawn out dramatically. Say two. B2. Two. Uh, now let's listen to him and see if he goes B2, see if he goes slow and speeds up. Okay, so we're going to say the short balls real real quick. The quicker the better. They almost start to disappear. They're said so quick. All right, say gani. And say sigani. Oh, there's that laying it down again. Si means like to lay it down. Say na sigani. Mina sigani. Shki. Shki minasagani. I said wrong. Say, shki minasagani. I said it wrong again. Shki minasigani. Shki minasigani. Okay, say ba. Say ba shki. Ba shki. Okay, say a mini. Say mini bashki mina sigani. Okay, repeat after me. Mini bashki mina sigani. One more time. Mine bashki mina sigane. Be two sigane. Let's cut to the chase. Everyone just say, everyone just, everyone just say, be two sigane. Okay. Be two sigane. Be two sigane. Okay, all uh, right here we're gonna we're gonna have one big long booger here. I mean one big Okay <laughs> My favorite boogers are not my favorite uh, All right, say say mine bashki min I blew it mine bashki min sigane b2 sigane Holy smokes, that was awesome. I mean, why should we start at the beginning? Let's just jump to the, let's just jump to the whole thing all at once, all right? All right, here we go. 
Uh, we're going to go through the vowel sounds real quick. To, uh, say book Say uh, 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 I, 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 I'm going to say the whole thing, and then you guys are going to repeat after me. Mine bashke mina se gane bi tu se jigane pa kwe je gane. Easy as blueberry pie, right? Oh! Okay, now let's, now let's, let's listen to it. I know. Uh, I'm gonna see if he uses a different vowel. No, he hit it, huh? Son of a gun. I wish I could do that. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah. I have it down because of that. So Johnny Mitchell would put Chigaate we met the the old time Frenchman in he put it in front of it. Chigaate we met uh Chigaate we met the Gushi mini Boshki mini Sagani Bitu said you're gonna be Kojigan. I'm like, holy smokes. That's just one word, that's just pie. <laughs> Johnny Mitchell. Yeah, my old buddy. All right. All right, all right. Let, let, Okay, the idea is to understand the, the difference between... By the way, did you did, did we find out if blueberry pies are animate or inanimate? Blueberry pie. Is a blueberry pie animate or inanimate? So anything that has flour in it is animate. Oh. Noun, animate. See, there is a bigger word. There's the plural word. Yeah, it ends with a, ends with a ug. Plural. So if it, if it ends with the G, the plural, it means oh, it's animate. It's animate. Is it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Apple pie is bigger than blueberry pie. <laughs> oh, let's go back. So let's go back and finish. Okay, now we're. Do, do you guys remember if raspberries were animate or inanimate? Raspberries are animate because the plural ends in uh, G. So we are going to go back and we are going to finish. Uh, we're going to try to say, uh, if uh, what should I use? Should I use, uh, should I use me jin? Or do I use we sini amo or me jin? Uh, I want to eat raspberries. <laughs> and raspberries are animate. Yeah. Middle helper there. <laughs> box elder. Middle box elder. <laughs> Checking every saw. So look at that. Uh, what type of verb is I want to eat him or her? So I want to eat. I am the subject, yeah. and I want to eat him or her. So, VTA, because so, him or her, the object, <laughs> subject is I, him or her is object, and the object is animate. So I need to use the VTA. So I go to the dictionary, and this is what you guys are going to be doing. You're going to learn how to go from the dictionary and go to these charts and then choose the correct verb. Because if you if you say I want to eat it him or her, that's not correct, Ojibwe. Mm -hmm. Or I want to I want to bring it him her. That that doesn't work. You have to say I want to bring her. I want to eat her. I want to eat him. So here it is Amo, and uh, oh, I hit the wrong button. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I want to eat. Oh, it's paired with Mijam. Mijam's the opposite inanimate. 
Okay, remember there's an O on here. O and W kind of interchange back and forth. If we're going to stick an A on the end of it, and we'll get to this later. If I want to stick AA on the air, it switches to the O falls off and the W comes on. So, so let me let me let me go down here and say I want to eat raspberries. So we know the the root the root word is a mo, and uh, we're gonna put uh, I I want to. Uh, uh, no, that's uh, this is amo and b is am amu. Oh, okay. So it's no It's like it. So ni is I, and we'll get to this in the next four days. Uh, ni is me, we is future want to. I ni want to we. I want to eat. Now the o can switch out with the w because I am going to add. Uh, let me put the root word back on here, and I want to add him, him or her. So I'm going to put ah. Niwi amwa. Now I got a I got a morph it. There's a there's a little rule we'll get into later. Uh, niwi the O is gonna change to a W. Niwi amwa, and then we got to put raspberries in there. And I forgot how to say raspberries. I do know how to say it, but I'm just saying that so I can go back. Uh, let's go to grass. Raspberry. Because I want to look at the animacy again. Now, so misko min is one. Misko is red. Min is a a, a, a a sphere, a globular. It's a red globular. And uh, it says the plural is ug. Misko min nug. The plural ends in a letter G. So I know it's animate. I'm going to use that. Am I going to eat one raspberry or many raspberries? Many. I can't, you can't eat just one. So I'm going to say, I'm going to, I need to switch this. I need to add another letter to make, this means I want to eat him. I, I, I want to eat him, but I want to say, I want to eat them. So we got to, and it will show you later how to do this. It's in all everything's in the charts and everything's in the dictionary. I want to eat them. Animate. Okay, ni we wog. Oh, what's the uh, what's the blueberry uh, raspberries? And it was misko means red. Min is a berry, but there's more than one. It, and it, it's plural. G misko minuk. Okay, everyone, uh, let's practice uh, the vowels again. So everyone say nug. nug. Say nug. nug. Say it louder, <laughs> nug. <laughs> min nug. nug. <laughs> say min nug. Min nug. Sko. Sko. Sko min nug. Mi sko min nug. Miss. Oh, so everyone say a uh, a mug. Ni we ni we a mug. Miss Gominuk. So I want to eat them. Hit animate. I am this. I am the subject. Them animate things are the object. It is a transitive verb because it makes the letter T. Because transfer, the, the verb action of the subject transfers, transitive transfers onto an object. The question is, is there an object or not an object? If there is an object, it's a transitive verb. If there's no object, it's intransitive. There's nothing transferring onto an object. It's just being by itself. Okay, I see, any questions? I see some confounded looks. I think that's the right word. Con is in constricted. Question. So then what is V I I stand for? Okay. So the letters don't line up. There's supposed to be four columns, but there's only three. So let's back up and let's take a look at this. The question is, why what is V I I verb in animate intransitive? These letters don't line up very good. So I'm going to go here. 
on the chart on page two. <coughs> See, there's supposed to be four columns, but they're only, there's supposed to be four columns. One, two, three, four. It's a verb. Is there a subject? And is it transitive or not transitive? And does it have an object? So there's supposed to be four. And first of all, they're all verbs. So all of them have a V on it. V-T, V-I-I, V-A-I, V-T-I, V-T-A. They all have V for verb. So that's a given. Now the question is, is the subject, if there is a subject, if we're talking about the subject, is the subject inanimate or is the subject animate? So in the case of the box, the box is inanimate. Okay, so the box is inanimate, it's the subject. The box is big, the box is small, the box is old, the box is new, uh, the box is wet, the box is dry. But it, it's it's intransitive, it's not doing anything to an object. The verb, the bis, the action of the verb does not transfer onto an object. It's just being brown. It's not making something brown or making something brown. It, it's just being brown all by itself. Uh, it's not doing anything to anybody else. So there's no object when we're just talking about a VI, a verb that's inanimate and it's intransitive. Therefore, there's no object because it's intransitive. It doesn't transfer onto an object. And this is very important. Everything depends on this very, this very thought. Which verb do I use? All right, so that's a very good question. Um, you know, it would really be helpful is if they had um, VII -I -I in an example sentence, a couple of them. Wouldn't okay. It? Like, let's go down and have, like, so let's do that. Examples. So here goes some. Uh... So you can do that, but I'll ask. Uh, with the VII, it basically sounds like you're just describing the object. Yep. Like, it's yep. whatever it is. So yep. The box is red. The box can be. Yeah. And, uh, or it is raining. Right. So you're describing the weather. Yep. Or it is night. You're describing. Or we're describing it and what's going on. What's going on with it? Because they can do some actions. You could you could say the the ball is rolling. Right. But when they it, change it, then it, the ball is rolling. The ball is not rolling something else. Right. The ball is not rolling someone. It's just rolling all by itself. Minding so, its own business rolling. Then would it still be VI? It would still be a VI because it's not doing anything to anybody else. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's... Uh, the ball is rolling. Okay, here's another one. The The ball is blue. What What can we talk about a ball? What are some of the things the ball, uh, we can... The ball is bouncing. Okay. The ball is expensive. <laughs> you want how much for that? 25 bucks. A $1,500 bowling ball? Are you crazy? <laughs> I just go get one at the bowling lane. They'll never know. <laughs> I just bring my bag with and put that that big ugly blue one in there and off the races. The ball is expensive. Uh, uh, here is it is raining. Uh, uh, it is night. It is night time. That sounds a little bit better, right? Uh, uh, it is big. Oh, yeah. Any, any, any more? It just a couple more. I want two more. It. It is what? Windy. It is windy. There we go. Could I say something like it is funny or not? Yep. Yep. It is funny. So we're talking about a thing that's funny. It could be a funny little uh, robot or funny little oh, stuffed animal. Yeah, anything. But it is funny. All right. Okay, what you saying? A thing is inanimate or a thing that is something that's not alive, something that's inanimate, and it's intransitive, I means it's not doing anything to anybody, it's just doing it by itself. 
on its own, minding its own business. Uh, it is broke. It is fixed. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's go to the VAIs. And it's some example, a, a verb that is the subject is animate and the and it's intransitive, it's not doing anything to anybody else. The subject is animate, but it's not doing anything to it or him or her, so it's just a VAI. It's a verb with an animate subject and it's intransitive, therefore there's no object. VAI. Uh, okay, like he is entering. He's not doing anything to any boss. He's just simply entering. Uh, he is sitting. He is stretching. I didn't say stretching him or stretching it. He is just stretching. I could go like this. And I'll, be, I'll be stretching. But it would switch to a VTI if I went with this paper and I tried to stretch. That would be a VTI. So you're trying, you're you're doing something to something, to an object. You, I'm the subject and I'm doing it to it. So if he said he is stretching it, it becomes a VTI. If he says he's stretching him, like a pancake or whatever, uh, if he's stretching him, then it becomes a VTA, but we're not there yet. So uh, back row, give me an example of a VAI. She is screaming. Yep, she's not screaming at me. She's not screaming at you. She's just plain old screaming, minding her own business. Because she can't say who replies. She is. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about this one? She is trying. Uh, how about uh, she is pondering? Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, no, we're not going to go there. We're going to tell herself positive affirmations. Ojibwe is easy. She is pondering. I didn't say pondering it or pondering him. She just pondered. So if you wanted to say she is pondering Ojibwe, then, then would that be a, uh, a VTA? It's, uh, it's, it's a philosophical question. Some would say the language is alive. It's a living being constantly growing, constantly changing. And we breathe life into it. Every each time we use an Ojibwe word, we breathe life into it. All right. But you can see she is speaking. Yeah, every time we're speaking English, we're letting the flame get dimmer and dimmer. And men Ojibwe We should be using Ojibwe all the time. Yeah. See now the life of it just got a little bit brighter. Every remember like every time the bell rings, the uh, angel is born, something like that. Oh, good. Every time. Every time we speak Ojibwe, life is given to the language. There we go. But let's look it up. Let's find out. Let's see what the Indians say about it. Oh. See what happens when you become a doctor. See what happens when you drink too much coffee? Double shot of espresso? Okay, we're going to see if Ojibwe language is animate or inanimate. And then, and then, and then, and then. Let me just, let me, Ojibwe mo win. Let's try that. See if that's in the dictionary. See if Ojibwe is in the Ojibwe dictionary. I'm oh, just kidding. Oh, it's now an inanimate, oh no! Okay, so the question is, oh, she is pondering Ojibwe. What type now, of verb is that? That be. What, what, what kind of verb? Verb? Ooh, yeah. verb. Well, not herb, verb. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's thinking about Ojibwe. So, would the subject, I mean, she is the subject, thinking would be what? The, okay, she is thinking about it. So then, it would be... VTI is the correct answer. She's thinking about it. But if she was thinking about him, it would be a VTA. Yeah, but Ojibwe is it's inanimate, so now it's now it's VTI. It is a VTI. Okay. okay. I wonder how they would say it before because I thought I heard somebody say something about when is more recent. When? With the wind changing 
Uh, verbs, the nouns. Uh, yeah, they tend to use it more often because English is a verb language, uh, yeah, a noun language, and Ojibwe is a verb language. So we're tending, don't worry about it. Yeah. We said, uh, okay, That's let's, let's, right. <laughs> let's come up with another, uh, we're looking for uh, uh, one more VAI example from the class. Give me an example of a VAI. She sings. She sings. Mm. She sings. Yeah. Is that what she said? Sing, well, sing, 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 sing song. Yeah. Sing. She is singing. Yeah. yeah. She sings. Okay. So how can you say she sings instead of she is singing? Uh, it, it, either, either way, I don't know. I'm. It, it could work both ways. It's you can do what you want. It's a free country. If you're from Red Lake, you can do whatever you want. It's a sovereign nation. If you're if you're half German and half Ojibwe, you can still do whatever you want because you're because you're crazy and nuts, right, sister? Yes, she said right. If you're from White Earth, you can do whatever you want until you get caught. All right. What's his name? Said John Roberts. Yeah, I say that. He said, "You're if you're from White Earth, you're an earthling, white earthling." That's right. You can't be a white, white Laker. <laughs> hey, so on that one, behave. Going, there's a question. Could we say like the let's see, the, no, the raspberry is animate. So mm -hmm. can you say the raspberry is? there or like sitting on the table okay the raspberry is there here's the question the raspberry is there first of all what type of verb is it the raspberry is there is the raspberry doing anything to anybody is the raspberry animate yes raspberry is animate the subject is animate and it's there being in a place uh, is this, it, no matter if it's here, there, or anywhere, the question is, is the blueberry doing anything to anybody? No. It's just sitting there. So it's, it's just being... Being, It's just being someplace. It's a yeah. V V A I. It's a VAI. Uh, what, what, what was this sentence then? The raspberry is there, T-H-E-R-E. -E. What if I'm trying to describe the taste of it then? The raspberry is sweet. Hey. Okay, is the raspberry doing anything to anybody? Yeah, just a minute, hold on. The ras... I get a kick out of this. I just learned how to spell this word this year. <laughs> raspberry is there. Uh, the raspberry is sweet. Okay, is the raspberry doing anything to anybody? So it's still a V-A-I. The raspberry is the subject, but there's no object. The you could say the raspberry is sweetening it if you crush it up and throw it in the water. The raspberry is sweetening the water. Sweetening the water. Wa water is inanimate. So what type of verb is the raspberry is sweetening the water? Well, it's still be because it's not doing anything. It is. It's well, sweetening it's sweetening it. All right, let's, let's look at the chart. Can you fix the sweat and make it sweet? <laughs> you got sweat, sweet sweat on there. Did I? Sweet. Okay. Are you thinking about sweat lodge? <laughs> in water and raspberry sauce. Yeah, it's sweet. Already, uh, so the question is, the, the raspberry is sweetening it. So then it would be VTI. It'd be a VTI because it's raspberry is sweetening it, which is the water. The raspberry is sweetening the water. So are we going to do VTI? It's sweet, sweeting. <laughs> Raspberries. The ra we're, okay, so let's go to the next one on the list here. Going clockwise, because Ojibwe's, we do everything clockwise. Oh. We're going to go to VTA. So I'll give you a couple examples of a VTA. Um, let me shut this thing off. There we go. A VTA. It means there's, the subject can be a inanimate or animate doesn't care it could be either one let's say uh i'm giving it to her i'm giving it to her now it doesn't matter what i'm giving if i'm giving her a blueberry or a raspberry it doesn't matter if what i'm giving to her is animate or inanimate i'm giving i'm giving it to her her is the object 
So if I gave her a blueberry, it would be a, still a VTA. If I gave her a raspberry, it would still be a VTA. Because it doesn't matter who the subject is. It doesn't matter what I'm giving to her. It's the only that the one that's being given to is animate. VTA. So it's me to her. I am the subject. She is the object. I'm the subject. She's the object. I am giving it to her giving something away doesn't matter what i'm giving if it's animate or not the point is i'm giving it to her you also say taking, um, taking, taking it from oh, yep so wait a minute let me catch up to all these cool okay. sentences and this is a, a v we're, we're doing vtas mm -hmm. i am giving it to her uh uh uh, what did you say? I'm taking it from him. I'm taking it from him. So, uh, take is the action. I am the subject. The verb is take. There is an object that is described in the sentence. I am taking it from him. I am the subject. Taking is the verb and it's transferred. The action is transferring onto an object that's animate. I am taking it from him. All right. So that's a VTA because the object is animate. Uh, we'll get back to it. Remember, there's three, only three letters. There's supposed to be four letters. There's supposed to be four columns, but uh, they didn't need to. We'll get back to that in a little bit. Uh, just more examples of a VTA. Could I also say I'm seeing... Can you please quit hogging all this I'm stuff? Sorry, I I'm, just have so many questions. I mean, your brain is like... Brrr. No, I'm just teasing you. Go ahead, because everybody else is listening in there. Well, because I don't, I don't get to do it when we're actually doing our meetings. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm just teasing you. Go ahead. Fire it up. But could I say I'm singing to him? Yes, yes. Ninagamoto wa <laughs> There's a song that says, I'm singing to her, my sweetheart. Okay. All right. I am singing to, what'd you say, him? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's Valentine's Day, and the wife is singing to the husband <laughs> or future husband. Yeah. It's, what more could you ask for in life, right? Mm -hmm. I am singing to him, singing to him. I am the, I am the uh, subject. And I am, and it doesn't matter in BTS if the subject's animate or anything. It could be the, uh, the, uh, the Valentine's card is singing to him. You open it up and it's a mechanical one. Uh, the subject in a VTA, because it only says verb transitive animate object. So it, it doesn't matter. But the point being, it's transitive and there's an object. Subject is I. Singing is the verb. And the action is happening from the subject to the object. I am singing to him. So when we look in the sentence, we see there's a subject and an object, right? Uh, I'm going to look at some of these sentences. The first sentence, I'm giving it to her. Who's the subject and who's the object and I'm giving it to her? Her is the object. In the next sentence, who's the object in the second sentence? So remember, if you're going to take notes, it's going to slow you down and you're not going to be able to learn. And if you pay attention in the moment, you're going to dance with us and float with us. You're going to learn how to drive this drive this spaceship here. All right. And if you take notes, then uh, you're behind a few seconds, you're lagging, and you're trying to catch the letters and spelling, and you're not paying attention to the point. So stay on point. Uh, I don't mean to be rude. But I found this with the, uh, the other classes we've taught. Because uh, we'll send you the notes. We're going to send you the notes. And you got to leave a, we got to do, a, we need a, uh, a, a sign-in sheet. And, and Wes will get that. Wes is co-teacher. He'll take over in a bit. It's just, it's just confusing when she when she um, talks because you're on one thing and then she'll butt in and say another Sorry. thing. So it's yeah. confusing for me. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's tough. It's tough because there's different learning styles. Some people learn uh, when one person is talking. Some people work when many people are talking. So anyways, we'll keep that in mind. Let's go with the front row. I need a VTA example. 
There's got to be a subject, and the object has to be animate. Something or someone's doing something to an uh, animate being. Front row. That's only two of you. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're both named Awan Nuclear, both of them. She's Awan. I love you. Oh, Valentine's right on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in this sentence, who is the subject? I. Who is the object? Uh, what is the verb? Love. Uh, is this a transitive or intransitive verb? Yes. Why is it transitive? Because it has an object, yes. So there's a subject and an object in transitive verbs. But there's no object in intransitive verbs. Okay, one has a subject and object, that's transitive. If it doesn't have an object, just a subject, it's intransitive. All right, uh, let's go on to, uh, uh, well, let's, one more. Give me an extra, uh, uh, something that's a little bit less concrete. Um, I. I disdain him. I, I don't know if that's proper that English. Opposite, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to accept all your val valentines. You can drop it in the garbage can on your way out of class. Too late. Okay. Yeah. When they're not looking, just drop it in the garbage. Your job is not to like everybody, but to treat them nice. There it is. All right, that's balance, right? <laughs> I disdain him. All right, uh, is this a uh, is this a VTA or a VTI or a VAI? Yeah. A what? It's a VTA. Uh, middle row. Why is it a VTA? Middle row. Because there's a subject I, or and him, subject and object. What is the uh, front row? What is the verb? We're on the last one. Oh. Oh. Disdain. Yep. Disdain. Now, is disdain uh, in this sentence, is this uh, a transitive or intransitive verb? Is this is this a transitive verb? Yes or no? It's a VTA. Why is it a VTA? You are correct. From subject to object. Subject. Is there's a subject to object. Yep. And the object is living, so it's a VTA. And last one on the list, VTI. There. All right. What does VTI mean? I have a question. What, what it was this thing? Was it a transitive or? Oh, uh, yeah. they, at front row said it's a, a transitive because there's a subject and an object. If there's an object, a subject and an object, it's a transitive. And uh, because the object was animate, it's VTA, right? Now, I disdain it. I don't even know if that's that's correct set grammar, but I'm going to use it. Oh. I disdain it. I do not like green eggs and ham. I disdain green eggs and ham. <laughs> I disdain beets. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I just think beats. <laughs> beats, all right. Well, we got to know our beats animate or inanimate. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. It's a beat animate or inanimate. And I don't even know if I spelt it right. A beat. Once in a while, I can have a bite that's. Well, funny. put some salt on it, and it'll taste real good. Okay. Miss Go is red. Geese is any of the uh, tubular things. Uh, so it's the red geese. How do you pluralize G's? Jesus. No, I just that's English. We need the Ojibwe. Son, the plural is an. So if the plural plural ends in an, it's inanimate. If it ends in a G, it's animate. If the plural ends in a G, it's animate. If it ends in an, it's inanimate. And plus, it says right there, inanimate noun. Let's hear how to say it. Uh, wait, first practice, everyone say, jeez. 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 Jeez.
Jeez. No, say it out. Say it out, Rezzy. Say, jeez. Or you get bummed out, you go, jeez. Say, say, sco. Sco, jeez. Say, sco, Vikings. Sco, jeez. Okay, miss, sco, jeez. Now, let's hear how it really is said. Miss Cojis. Oh, guys, is that my aunt? Uh, Rose Tainter. Oh no, Jerry. Rose, Rose, uh, Rose Greenleaf. Miss Cojis. Miss Cojis. Yep. Um. One more. Miss Cojis. So now knows Miss Cojis. The last syllable gets the accent. You start out like, uh, we start out slow and you end up strong, like rolling on a river. You're going to just start it slow. Miss Go Jeez. No, she don't do it that bad. <laughs> That's like um, some of those songs, how Janelle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you sing. Oh, yeah. Miss Go Jeez. Miss Go Jeez. All righty. Yeah. I never really even thought about that. Yeah, cause, um, cause like who to whom is also put on the back of the word. There's a is it animate or inanimate? It's on the back of the word. Animacy, inanimacy, transitive, intransitive. All that stuff is a lot of stuff is happening on the end of the word. So you need to really articulate to be clear on who to whom and stuff like that on the end of the word. So that's why the last syllable is really accented. And plus, when you get older, you're like, what? What? I said, Miss Cole Cheese. <laughs> All right. Now, now, where were we? Goofing, goofing around. Okay, give me another VTI. So it's a verb. It's a verb and it's transitive. Therefore, there's a subject and an object. A uh, verb transfers on to something that's uh, inanimate. That's what the I stands for, inanimate. So I'm going to, somebody or something is going to do something to the thing that is clearly, the object is clearly inanimate, because we looked it up. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Somebody's going to do something to somebody? Nope. What uh, did you say? Uh, it. Oh, something, something yep. is going to do something to it. Yeah, so I guess the form would be like this. It would be subject, blank, plus, verb, and not necessarily that order, uh, object. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, that's uh, inanimate. We're talking about inanimate objects. We're going to do something to something. Something is what we're going to do to it. So I can't say I kicked the kid because <laughs> the kid would be animate. Now you're talking about goats, right? <laughs> As a teacher, you can't say stuff like that. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. right. yeah, so we can't say I kicked the kid. Yeah, no. uh, by accident, you know, I was walking, I was carrying a box. I couldn't see the kid and I accidentally kicked the kid. No, we can't put the animate thing the as an object. Tea. What? I spilled the milk. Yep. I spilled, I don't know, spilled the milk. Okay, and then uh, now is milk animate or inanimate? Who knows? I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> I, I have to say this. I can't help it. It's like Roger Rabbit. There, uh, I can't help it. Okay. I spilled. Oh, no. No, 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 no. This sucks because bean sounds like it could be animate. I got to look it up. In milk, in animate. Could be. What are we looking for to see if it's animate? Yes. Yeah, we're looking for the plural. If the plural ends in a G, it's animate. Down no. animate, yeah. And uh, here's the plural right here. Oh. So we can't use that one. That's a VT. Can't what? What's I spilled the beans is what? What's a VT, I, VT, a, V, I? So you can't trust. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I know because they make you bug it. That's why they're animate. No, uh, I'm gonna go put that up as an example over here. I spilled the beans. Okay, give me another uh, VTI when you do something to something that's inanimate. What if I tripped on my foot? It's animate. Would that be 
No, you didn't trip your foot. You just tripped and the foot happened to be the location. Let me let me look it up. You know, tell you the truth, I don't know. That's my best uh, ed, uh, my best BS answer. <laughs> Oop, got, you got to click on the English if you're typing English. Saint to check up. Well, let's just let's shorten the search. But so we got to think. So this is what you do when you when you're in Ojibwe. When you're thinking Ojibwe, your brain's got to pick which of the four. And you got to decide, is there a subject and object? So in the sentence, uh, I tripped on my foot. Am I doing something to my foot or not? You could say in the location of my foot or on my foot, in my foot, at my foot, you could do that. You could put a location marker and then zid ding. I don't know. Uh, uh, let's see if there's any help here. Nope. Stubs your toe. You stub it, but that's you're not doing. That's when you're doing something to yeah. it. All right. That's a that's a tough one. That I don't know the answer. Man, I thought I knew everything. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Sorry. That's a living being. It's anim. It was animate. She smacked that bug, that box elder. That's a big one. No, no, in Jibway culture. We respect all living beings. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, Miss Tomato. Word tomato. Bug slayer. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. All right. Let focus back back on business. Give me a VTI. Bugs are animate, so we can't say she killed it. We have to say she killed him. Okay, the, uh, uh, let's look at that. That's a really cool one. Yeah. I took a picture. Now that depends on what does that mean. Does it mean I snapped a picture, I took a picture, or does that mean I went over to the wall when no one was looking and I took a picture? <laughs> yeah, so in this one, like like I have my camera on my phone, I took a picture of her killing that bug right in a bunch of right in front of a bunch of Ojibwe's. Yeah. <laughs> where, where that's a big cultural no no. Yeah. No, sorry, just add on. All right, back to business. I took a picture. Uh, so you guys tell me, is this a V A I V I I V T A I or V T A? I took a picture. Is it a transitive verb? Or is it an intransitive verb? Let's see. I am picture taking. I am taking pictures. Past tense. I took a picture. Now. So it is it. Ed. What is it called? What does she mean when she says? She says, uh, picture taking. My picture. I, I'm picture taking. I took a picture. I'm going to take a picture. I am picture taking. I took a picture. I think it's It's what? Transitive. Thumbs up if you say it's transitive. Okay, let's look it up in the let's look it up in the dictionary. Yep. Because I I'm gonna say. What do you think, Wes? I took a picture. He's gonna say yeah. VAI. Uh, okay. Here, here's what. Here's how you decide. Here's how I would. Here's how I'd make a judgment on this call. I'd say, did you take a picture of him? Did you take a picture of it? No, I took a picture. I didn't take a picture of him. 
So it's, I didn't take a picture of it. There's no object in the sentence. Only the subject. I'm picture taking. I am recording music. I am playing music. I am playing music to him. I'm not playing a fiddle. So how can we change it to a BTI? Well, no, no, no. Let's let's solve the question. Takes pictures. Takes a picture of him. Takes a picture of it. Takes pictures is a B. AI. Good. Oh, so nice. look, right. we're looking for examples. So let's, like Chris said, let's switch it to. Boop, 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 boop. Let's change that to what we're trying to make. We're trying to make VTIs. So I'm taking the picture, or is it the same? No, uh, that's the same. That's the same thing. I took a picture of. It's a V. We're trying to make a VTI. Super mm -hmm. I took a picture of the soup. Now it's soup. What'd you say? Soup chair. Oh, so I took a picture of soup, but is soup happening? Or anything? <laughs> let's just say. Let's just say. Yeah. If it has dumplings in it, anything with bread is animate. So. Uh, I took a picture of it. There, let's make it simple. I took a picture of it. So now it becomes so now a. So now there's now it has an object. Okay, so that was a very good a very good one. It got us to yes. think and learn. All right. Uh, very good. Okay, now use the word reading, but make it into a VTI. So reading, she is reading, is a VAI. She is reading. She is she is studying. She's reading. She's thinking. I'm not saying she's reading the book. I'm not saying she's reading the sign or she's reading between the lines. lines. I'm just saying she's reading. So that's a VAI. She is reading. But I want to say she's reading it. Oh, man, I give the answer away. She is reading it. Yeah, she is reading. Wonder if I here's a here's a trick question. It is red, as in as in reading. It is red. Red is being. B i i. It's a v i i. Cause here's the. I got the other one. Yeah. <laughs> the bitch one. It now. is red. Frequently. Same, same same thing. It is red. R E A D. It is red. The the clue is it. Instead of she is red. It is, it red. is red. It is red. The is the is the subject. subject. There is no object. It is no it, it is red to him, is red to it. It is just it is red. So that's a V I I. How about uh that was a trick question. One more easy, simple V T I. Let's go with uh, uh, Wes. She said something. That's V A I. Cause she's anime. An example of a VTI. There we go. She grabbed the box. Okay. Box is inanimate. Now, I'm going to go to the dictionary and I'm going to find a word. I'm going to find a VTI, correct? I'm going to do this in Ojibwe. She grabbed the box. All right. And, uh, what kind of verb do I need? She grabbed the box. Is, do I need a VTI or VTA? We need a VTI because one thing, we're in the VTI sections. And two, the box is inanimate. Inanimate object. So I go to the dictionary and I'm looking for grab. And I click on English because I type the English part. And... 
Now here's a VTA, here's a VTI class 2, a VTA. There's no V, I wonder if there's, yeah, there's even VAIs. There's even VI, she grabs things. No, she just no. grabs things in general. She captures. Okay, let's go to, uh, let's stay up in the Dave. Dave means you're like, you can you can reach all the way to the end of it. You can reach it. And bid, which one do I use? Dave Bij, Dave Bidun, or Dave Bidal? That's a VTA. What am I looking for? A VTI. Here's the VTI, so I'm going to use this one. Oh. De bi bi dun. Uh, bi, bi dun means with your hand. You're doing it with your hands, whatever you're doing. Dave is you're able to make it all the way, like your pants fits, Dave. It fits, it's just right. I can reach all the way over, Dave. I can reach it. Dave bi dun. She grabs it. <laughs> she grabbed the box. So it's de bi bi dun. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, sh in, in VTIs, we have to use O for she, and we'll get to it later, don't worry. And she she did it already. She already did it. And uh, uh, D stays because it's not followed by a short ball. And a box is, I don't remember how to say a box. Very good. And if we want to say the box, she grabs a box, we could say the you can add this word if you want. You don't have to. Okay. She grabbed the box. So I had to know which verb do I use. She grabbed him or she grabbed it. They're two different verbs. They're pretty close. Let's go back and look at how close they are. Because wouldn't it be the ETA? It's the object that... Um... So subject, object. Uh... VTAs are only animate objects. So, and that one, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. This one, uh, inanimate. I'm sorry. So let's, uh, we're going to finish uh, a line of thought. So we've practiced it, and now we need to see why there's three letter columns in the acronym instead of four. And. Yeah, we did. Okay. We did them all. They were good sentences. Okay, now. So the only reason uh, in in a VII, it's a verb. It's inanimate, uh, like the box is inanimate, and it's intransitive. The box is not doing anything to anybody or anyone. So therefore, a VII is intransitive. Uh, there's no object. There's none. There's no object. And uh, so they only use these three letters. They use VII. They're supposed to be four columns. Now, verb animate intransitive. The verb, the subject is animate. Verb, verb animate subject is intransitive. So therefore, we don't have to put a fourth letter on it. Uh, VTI, the verb, the subject in a can be either animate or inanimate. It doesn't matter. So they don't use that one. Normally there would be a letter squeezed in here. But since it doesn't matter, it could be either animate or inanimate. That's doing it. But without a doubt, in its transitive meaning, there is there is an object. Uh, and the object is without a doubt inanimate because I looked it up in the dictionary and the plural was ended in an N. <laughs> so subject, object. If it has a subject and an object, or I could just say, if it has an object, it's transitive. They all have subjects. This one could be either one animate or inanimate, animate or animate, animate or inanimate. So sometimes you look, well, it's kind of confusing because it seems like there should be four. So don't worry about it. We are going to, uh, is there any questions? Uh, the Okay, uh, uh, they all have subjects, but only the transitive verbs have objects. And uh, if it has an object, it's transit. If it has an object, it's transitive, right? And we shall take a break. We'll let our brain calm down.
and then we're going to smack it some more when you get back. What time do I start? On way be da, let us take a break. On way be da. Let's take a break and come back at quarter after 11. Air crying, boujou, minoa, ginoa. I stole that from Wes. Okay, boujou, ginoa, minoa. Hello, all y'alls again. And we're going to, this half of the section, this is the last part I'm taking, and then uh, Wes is going to, the esteemed colleague from uh, Little Rock is going to take over after me. And then we're going to do conjunct, change conjunct. So at the end, are we getting a, cop a copy of this? Yep, I'm, I'm going to email a copy of all these notes, so you don't have to take notes if you don't. Yep, and you get a, a 24 hour CE, 24 hours of CEUs because we go six, six, and six, and six. It adds up to how much? 24. All right, now we what we did cover so far is uh, transitive and intransitive verbs. We did the verb four verb types: V I I, V I I V. T A V T I V I I not necessarily in that order. There's four verb types. Now each of them basically you can use them four different ways. So I could use a V A I in the in the imperative, which means you're bossing some around. Sit down, shut up, listen. That's the imperative. And uh, the independent would be the response you always get. I am sitting down. I am listening. And then uh, conjunct would be uh, it has to be said in conjunction with the main part of the sentence. Uh, 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 when I'm listening, if I'm listening, as I'm listening. Uh, and then uh, conjunct change would be when you use it like a noun, a verb like a noun. I am the listener. I am the swimmer. I the swimmer. I the listener. I the eater. I the one that's eating. That's conjunct. So impaired, that's those four. So I'm going to give you examples of all of these. Okay, so let me use, uh, let me see how I want to do this. So an imperative, we could be say, and we're going to use English just to make it, hopefully it'll be clear. Uh, we could say, sit, you sit down. You. Sit, sit down. God dog. And then I'm going to put it in an independent sentence, and I'm going to say, you are sitting down. That's called an independent sentence. Uh, imperative is when you're bossing someone around. You're giving them a directive. You're commanding them to do something. You're giving them a, an imperative. You sit down. And an independent sentence, uh, you can capitalize the begin. Let me do this. There, imperative. In an independent sentence, you can capitalize the beginning, put the end, uh, a period at the end. There's a verb in a. Oh, at, at, uh, can you shut your phones off, please? Hello? Put them on silence. Um, mm -hmm. Independent, you are sitting down. You're making a simple statement. You are sitting down, you are hungry. There's a lot of different independent. Independent means you can punct, capitalize the beginning and punctuate, put a punctuation at the back. Are you sitting down? Yeah. And a conjunct means it has to be said. Let me put a period there. Let me, let me maybe this will be a, kind, kind, kind of a, a visual. It has to be said. It has to be attached, said into in conjunction with something else. Uh, uh, let me see. Here we go. Be Q U I to be quiet when you are sitting. Okay, I'm just put a comma there just so it's a kind of little bit more visually 
easier. So is the when you are sitting the conjunct? Is the conjunct the when you are sitting? So if I said to you when you are sitting, you're like, uh, oh, what's the rest of it? I'm waiting for the rest of the sentence. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. You're leaving me hanging. It's an unfinished sentence. It's an incomplete sentence. But when you say it in conjunction with more words, like uh, in this case, the entire thing is a command. Be quiet when you are sitting. Be quiet is the main part. And when you are sitting is said in conjunction with that command. I'm trying to figure one that would use an independent. So in this case, this is a this is a, a command. Whoop. Where am I at? Tab. Here we go. This is a command. Or no, I'm sorry, imperative. Imperative plus conjunct. All right. So, so I'm going to try to think of uh, how about this? No, that's a conjunct change. Oh yeah, need a bunch of ones. Okay. I'm trying to say when you are sitting, when you are sitting, when you are sitting. So it's in conjunct form. So I need to put uh, independent sentence in front, in front of. Um, Can you put like sit still? And then we're back to a command. I'm trying to use the independent uh, clause. Oh, uh, we could say, uh, uh, you are happy, you are, you are, sur you are, you are, sur oh yeah, I saw, saw you, I, I saw you when you were sitting, already, all right. The tacos are here. The Indian tacos are here. But that's incorrect, politically incorrect. So we'd say the indigenous tacos are here. And uh, Red, Lake Red Lake even makes it more delicious. Why do Red Lake tacos taste better than any other taco anywhere? I want to put it on pause. Those were delicious Indian tacos. I could call them indigenous or First Nations, but they're all English words, and they're all wrong. The only right word is Anishinaabe. They're Anishinaabe talkers, tacos. Um, review. Uh, this morning we talked about, is it V-A-I, V-I-I, V-T-R, V-T-I? At the foundation of everything is, is it transitive? It's transitive if there's a subject and an object. Now, if the object is, is inanimate, it's VTI. If the object, the one that's having it done to it, if it's animate, it's VTA. So it could be a, a VTI, it would be inanimate object. A VTA would be an animate object. Subject is one doing it. All right? And if there's no, if there's no, object it's intransitive the subject could be inanimate like a box a vii or it could be animate like a person vai verb animate intransitive now we're going to move on to uh, uh we are going to move on to what are the what are the four forms all right <clears throat> so we already figured out what VAIs VTAs and uh, VTIs and VIIs are they have uh, no object 
they do have an object. The object is animate. The object is inanimate. But now you can use them, each one of these, you can use four different ways. You can use it as an imperative, independent conjunct, or a conjunct change. And what the heck does that mean? We're going to find out. Um, so I'm going to uh, take all of this and I'm going to do it over again. I'm only going to use the word, you sit down, you, you are sitting down, when you are sitting down, when you are sitting. And, and uh, let me add this on here. There's a little trick to find out if it's conjunct. Here's the trick. After 30 years of trying to figure it out, we find out it means when. It means uh, conjunct means it has built into it when, while, as, if, that. I know that you are sitting down. Stuff like that. Okay. And conjunct change is going to be the conjunct changes verb acts like a noun I better do it like I did the other one a verb used as a noun like the runner the runner the swimmer the speaker the yellow one, the one that is green, the one that's entering. Who's it? Who, who's that one that stood up? The one that stood up. That's a conjunct change. The one that stood up. The one or the ones. And that, that's another uh, giveaways. Now, singular or plural. The one or the ones. Uh, it could also be those. The or, yeah. The one or the ones, animate or inanimate. Okay? And that, that's when the verb's acting is not like the swimmer or the swimmers. The ones that stood up, the ones that left, that's a noun, the, the ones that left. Uh, okay, so that's a, a change conjunct when the verb acts like a noun. All right? All you, and and we'll, we'll be getting to that. So let's use an uh and here's an example as uh, the one that left. There's an example. The one that left. No, we're using you sitting. You the one that sat. You the one that left. There we go. You the one. You the one that left. Can't you use the Yeah. Yep. So, you, I'm going to do it that way. Uh, when we get into Ojibwe, it'll, be, it'll make more sense. So, the imp imperative is when you're bossing someone around. You, sit down. Independent is you're just making statements. Capital, uh, capitalize the beginning of the sentence. Put a period. Capitalize the beginning of the sentence. Put a period at the end. You are sitting down. That's a nice sense. You are sitting down. I know I'm sitting down. You could and so you could go like this. You could say, I know that I am sitting down. Uh, so in this sentence, I know would be the uh, uh, independent form. I know it. I know that. What is it that I know? That I am sitting down. Here's conjunct. That I am sitting down. So in this case, I know is a complete sentence. You could put a period at the end. It's independent. It can stand independently. So let's call this I know. I know is, is, is independent. 
I spelt it incorrectly, independent. It's independent form. Uh, that, I, or, or we're, we're using you. We're trying to stay with you just for now. You are sitting down. So, this is my cheat. This is I. This helps me to understand conjunct. Uh, if it's in the conjunct form, it implies these words, even though it doesn't have it written anywhere. It's built in there that you're sitting down, as you're sitting down, when you're sitting down, if you're sitting down, and else has the word that. So we could say that you are sitting down. If I called you up on the phone, you woke up in the middle of the night. If I called you up and I said that you are sitting down, you're like, that's not a full sentence, that you are sitting down. It has to be said in conjunction with more words, with the main part. It's called the main clause. The main part, you can use a command as a main clause or independent as a main clause. So we're going to say, I know that you are sitting down. So I know is an independent sense, I know. I know that you're sitting down. That you are sitting down is the conjunct. All right? Now, don't, don't worry, this is the first time it's being thrown at you. You're like, what did you just throw at me? But we're gonna, we're gonna exercise it as we go. And that's day three, that you are sitting down. I just wanna give you some examples of, uh, of uh, imperative. Imperative is the command. When you're bossing someone around, you put an exclamation mark on it. And then uh, uh, independent, you can put a period at the end, capitalize the beginning. It's an independent. It can stand independently as a completed sentence. That's what independent means. The clause can stand independently. Clause means a bunch of words around a verb. Or I can mean that. But... Uh, it can stand independently as a complete sentence. Capitalize beginning, put up punctuation at the end. And conjunct means that it, it can't stand by itself. Conjunct means it has to be attached. It has to be said in conjunction. Remember that song, conjunction function, what's your function? And, uh, this, and these are subordinate conjunctions. And there's different kinds of conjunctions. So, But what this means, it has to be said in conjunction with a main clause. You can use conjunction with a command. Sit down when I'm talking to you. Sit down if I'm talking to you. Sit down as I'm talking to you. That's a conjunct. Conjunct. That was a terrible example. Okay, so imperative is uh, listen to me. And one is I am listening to you. And then when you're listening to me. Look at me when you're listening to me. Uh, that when you're listening to me would be the conjunct. And and if I said, "Who's listening to me?" You could say, "I, the one that is listening to you." I, I, the one that is listening to you. Or you could put it in the bin. I am listening to you. Or you could put it in the conjunct. I am the one that's listening to you. That would be the changed conjunct. Change conjunct is when. You uh, use it, the verb is a noun. So if I wanted to tell you to uh, exit, you exit. How would I say you exit? You get out of here. You can leave. No, that's a set. That's an independent. That's you can leave. It's not a command. It's it's an option. You can leave. You should leave. Doesn't mean you have to leave. But, but if I say you get out. So who knows how to say exit versus enter in Ojibwe? <laughs> Being to gain means come in. Zaga um. <laughs> Zaga um. Zaga um means exit. It also means going to the bathroom. Because when you get up inside your house a long time ago, and uh, they didn't have toilets inside like they had outhouses, you say, where are you going? You say, Zaga um. I'm going, I'm, I'm going outside. I'm exiting. You don't want to tell in front of everybody when they're eating their nice tacos, I'm going to take a vicious dump. You don't, you don't say that. Do you? 
And then no one, when they come back in, you say, Gee. Unless you're from White Earth, they say that all the time, right, Becky? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a red laker. Oh, well, white. anyway, Zaga, um, it means exit. And so you, the toilet is the exit building, mm. the going outside building. That's a nice way of saying I'm going to the bathroom. In Zaga, um. Of course, we're Ojibwe's. We're not that polite. We say I'm going to the pee pee room or the poo poo yeah. room. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's a shijigi wigamik yeah. or it's a mizi wigamik. <laughs> and everybody knows everybody's business, no joke. <laughs> well, anyways, let's get back to imperative. If this is only if this is an imperative well, independent question. Because Tony Blaine says majan bizan. What does that mean? Say that again. Majan bizan. Like I know bizan means. Majan, Majan. But what, yeah, Majan. yeah, he's saying that uh, for the J, it should be John, Ma John, Ma John. My mom's name is John, Ma John. Ma John means leave, get out or skedaddle. How does that mean? Leave. leave, be quiet, get out of here, be quiet. Well, in English, you do that. Ah, oh, go on, get out of here. Be quiet. You're telling a big tale. I don't believe you. I'm calling BS on it. Ma John biz on. Now, now that's that's good for an, any of our teachers that are non-native and using Ojibwe language. Right on, right on. That's why we're here today. So proud of him. Even though he says Jean instead of John, it's okay, man. Just use Ojibwe. Here we go. Yeah. yeah, independent. The question is imperative, independent, conjunct, or change conjunct. So we're going to use exit. And how would you give an independent sentence using the word exit or exiting? Give me an English. Imperative. We already did imperative. We're on independent. independent. Yep. Independent. Give me an independent sentence oh. using the word exit. You can leave. You can leave. It's a nice sense it's not a directive you can leave but you don't have to gida maja gida zaga um what was yours i'm leaving i am leaving yep you can leave as one of us just said uh it's called i am leaving why are my capitals on hollering at you guys i am leaving okay and now we are going to go dot, 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 means it's said in conjunction with the main clause. Uh, uh, and, oh, here's here's this one here. This is the big one. Oops, wrong one. Duh. This is, this, when you use a conjunct clause, it should have well, when, while, as, if, or that kind of idea built into it and and it this helped me so much in understanding conjunct and this is the key to ojibwe is understanding the conjunct clause or conjunct form if you understand conjunct everything opens up oh i get it now this is the keystone this is the keystone in the arch it puts everything together it's either independent or conjunct and it's the keystone. If you can understand conjunct, the Ojibwe just opens up. It's the magic aha. Once a student comes on to aha, I know how to use conjunct form. When you're sitting, while I'm sitting, if I'm sitting, that you're sitting. I know that you're, for, you're sitting. I forgot that you're sitting. I like it when you're sitting. When you're sitting is a conjunct and it can't stand by itself. All right. So what did you say? This is the key to what? Keystone to understanding Ojibwe. When you're doing the uh, computations of there's four verb types and four, four, four verb forms, and I can use it this way, this way, that way. I don't quite get it, but once you get once you get conjunct, you're like, holy smoke, that's a good smudge. No, uh, holy that, smoke. Um, okay, what did uh, you say? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> once you understand it, every um. What will know? Uh, when, once you understand conjunct form and how it really works, yeah. everything opens up. Okay. You, 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 everything makes sense. It's like I can't get it. It's too much of this, or this, this, and this, and this, and then all of a sudden you, one day conjunct, the light comes on the conjunct. Everything makes sense. Four verb types, four, four different ways of using it: V A I, V T I, V T A, and V A V A I. And then there's the uh, imperative, the uh, 
independent, the conjunct magic one, and then a, a conjunct change. But once you understand that one, everything makes sense. Everything, the light comes on. All right. And so we'll make sure we stick close to that conjunct form. So uh, conjunct means that you say it with in conjunction with more stuff. Uh, it's like a, like the uh, the main clause is like the engine on the train. And something, in, you put it in conjunction with the main engine, like a choo-choo train. There's the main clause and then the conjunct, 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 conjunct. You can put as many conjuncts as you want. I like it when you're sitting there listening to, uh, as I'm talking, you know, so you can put a whole bunch of conjuncts on it. Uh, so uh, leaving, uh, when when you when you leave, or when you are leaving, when you are leaving, uh, don't forget to shake. Don't forget to grab your coat when you're leaving, or don't don't forget to to grab your hat when you're leaving. You know stuff like that when, when you're leaving. Don't to Sorry. Go ahead. I'll go here first. first. Then you. Go ahead. Can the conjunct come before? And you can put conjunct from when you are leaving. Don't forget to grab your hat. Okay. Yeah. Is that how the language is too? Yeah. You, yeah. It is. But the, yeah. So there's no such thing as a as a as a rule. There are only guides. These are only guides. You can bend the rules in Ojibwe. Uh, you can talk all in conjunct form all you want, and everyone would know exactly what you're saying, because you're able to chunk it together. Because the who to whom is built into it, you could break the rules and say, uh, "I'm still waiting for the uh, main clause," but you don't have to use a main clause. None of these uh, rules, none of the there's no rules. They're only guides. These are kind of like basically this is the pattern. This is the pattern of Ojibwe. And if you want to bend the rules, go ahead. Okay. If the listener understands what you're saying, that's fine. Fluent speakers, we've been around them, and they just, oh, today must be conjunct day, because they just speak conjunct all day long. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, and that was, uh, you know, a Franny and Pug. That's, they'd go on and on and on, all in conjunct form. And... Uh, Everyone knew exactly. They knew what they were talking about. The ones that knew Ojibwe more than me, they understood what they were saying. So, uh, conjunct, uh, when you're leaving, if you're leaving, that you're leaving. When, while, well, is it for that? Uh, I'm happy that you leave, that you're leaving. I'm happy. I will be happy when you leave. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you could be going on a fabulous trip in a positive, in a good way. Uh, conjunct change you, the one that's leaving. I, the one that is leaving. Uh, and the question was, can you put conjunct in front of the main clause? Yes, you can. Uh, when you eat your food, you should use a fork. Uh, you, sh uh, uh, you should use a napkin when you're eating. When you're eating. Or when you're eating, you should use a napkin. Okay, let me let me give you some sentences, and you're going to uh, you're gonna tell me if it's conjunct or not. Oh. Uh, Buys some milk. Milf. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think those are on the market. <laughs> yeah. What aisle is that? <laughs> okay. First of all, I'm gonna use. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna put a a command mark. Uh, exclamation. We'll get to that. Now, what I want you to do. Uh, what I want you to do is to tell me uh, which part of this sentence is conjunct and which part of it is imperative command. Which No, first of all, let's do one thing at a time. Which is the, imper uh, the conjunct part? When, while, well, as, if, or that? The beginning. The beginning. If you go to the store. If. Yep. If you go to the store, yep, because it has when, well, as, if, or that. Uh, if you go to the store, 
uh, kind of leaving you hanging, right? You're like, yeah. oh, yeah, what's the rest of the sentence? So that's conjunct. It has to be said in conjunction with more. Buy some milk for me. Yep. Yeah. It's imperative because I'm, I'm giving you a command. Buy some milk for me. So the entire thing is a command clause, a command statement, a command phrase. But there's the command uh, part, buy some milk for me. The other one is the uh, conjunct. Here's co imperative. So we're going to call this conjunct. This is the form. So collectively, it's a command, even though part of it's conjunct. All right. So let's go even further. If you go to the store, is that a is that a VAI, VTI, a VAI? If you go to the store, a VAI. Okay, I heard one right and one wrong. If you go to the store, are you doing anything to the store? You're just going there. Yeah, you're just going. The, the location where you're going is the store. So it's not a transitive because you're not doing anything to the store. So it's a VAI. If you go to the store and it's in the conjunct form, it's a VAI in conjunct form right here. All right. Oh, there Questions. Yes. Ah, ah, ah. I meant to ask, what is with the dashed middle line? Positive, it's negative. If you don't go to the store, it's a negative statement. Okay. If you don't go to the store, okay. get it at the gas station on your way home. Okay. Uh, positive, if you do go to the store, okay. do and don't. All right? So they could be positive or negative. Then there's, uh, you could have three more of these bullseyes. This is just regular indicative stuff. The, if I took another and made another tier, another uh, dimension, the next one would be called the uh, preterite, which means simple past tense. And there's a whole set of charts for them. We'll get to them. We won't get to them. The next one is the uh, dubitative. And the next one is uh, dubitative plus preterite. And there's whole sets of charts. So take these charts and times four. But we won't go there because it's not everyday conversation. That's your survival conversation. Oh. Now, now, on point. So if you go to the store, VAI, because you're not doing anything to the store. And uh, if you go to the store, is conjunct. So it's right here. If you go to the store, buy me some milk. Okay. Buy me some milk. What kind of verb is that? Buy some milk for me. Now that's tricky, isn't it? It's like, are we talking about I'm doing it to the milk? Or I'm doing it for you? I'm going to say for you is the, is the verb. It's a VTA because I am animate. So buy some milk for me. And is it buy some milk for me? Is that an imperative independent conjunct or con change conjunct? Buy some milk for me. Does that sound like you're being bossed around? Yeah. Buy I some mean, milk well, for me. Yeah, I mean, maybe, but you could just say buy some milk for me without that. You could say it's, it's still a command, but you said it nicely. Right. I'm giving you an imperative. So I'm not it's making a statement. You anything. are going to buy some milk for me. That's almost a command. <laughs> you will. That is a command. Yeah. <laughs> Smokey's mom on Friday. Yeah. Make it enough. <laughs> All right. So, um, buy some milk for me is a command. It's a you to me. Buy some milk for me. You are the subject. Buy some milk on behalf of me. You, uh, the way tomorrow shin. Adawe is by. Put tomorrow on it, add that on there to change it to a VTA. Buy some milk tomorrow shin. Adawe tomorrow shin do do shabu. Buy some milk for me. Anyways, the, the point is it's a VTA and it's an imperative. All right, let's go back. Oh, you know what I can do too is I can do this. If I can. Mm -hmm.
Uh, maybe I can't. Let's go to another sentence. Let's... Uh, that's a change. Um, nope, that's not change conjunct. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. It's in the wrong spot. It's in the wrong spot. Gotcha. It's embarrassing. Right. Oh, why did I do this? Oh, there we go. Uh, let me give you another sentence. Under... Uh, we're under this section. All right. All right. Let's uh, do another uh, conjunct. When, well, as if for that. Give me a sentence that's that. When, well, as if for that. Just make one up. Wow. Okay. How about while you are looking at me? I think I don't. While you were eating. While, <laughs> while you were eating. I was. He sacrificed it for us. Oh, man. He. I was watching you oh. because I didn't get any. <laughs> I was watching you. Okay, now, which part of this sentence is conjunct? While you were eating, because how do you know? Because, yep, as when, well, as if for that. And that's the magic key. This is gonna, this is gonna bust open the universe of language when you figure out conjunct means when, while, as if for that. Let's up. Let's practice it. Everyone, close your eyes and repeat after me. When, while, as if for that. When, while, as if for that. Again, when, well, as if or that. When, well, as if or that. Yep. Uh, again, <laughs> close your eyes and listen and repeat after me. Conjunct means when, well, as if or that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to work on... Keep your eyes closed. Hey, close your eyes. Come on. Okay. When, well, as if or that. When, while, as, if, or that. One more time. When, while, as, if, or that. When, while, as, if, or that. Conjunct means when, while, as, if, or that. Conjunct means when, while, as, if, or that. Okay. All right, I'm going to go around the room, and I'm going to and I'm gonna point at you, and you're going to say conjunct means when, while, as, if, or that. Okay, now, well, you can open them because I'm switching it. Yeah, so you can't see. Conjunct means when, well, as if, or that. Ed! Oriana! Conjunct means when, well, as if, or that. But all the words are there. Right? They're not in order, but they're on there. I don't know if I signed. Did I sign in? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, nope. Yeah, like, <laughs> okay. Uh, Darren. Did I say it right? Darren. Mm. Okay, so it's kind of built in. One more. Uh, uh, let's go with Christina Gale. Conjunct means when, well, as, if, that. No, you're looking at the paper. <laughs> oh! Okay, see with your eyes closed. Conjunct, Conjunct means when, well, while, as, if, or that. Hey. There. Okay. Uh, uh. Brittany? Conjunct means when, well, as, if, or that. Uh, Sasha? Conjunct means when, well, as, if, or that. Darcy? Conjunct means when, while, as, if, or that. Becky. Conjunct means when, while, as, if, or that. Okay, now without looking. 
I don't know if I'm you're looking. I'm my hands and going, when, while, as, if, or that. Okay, that's <laughs> a good way to, everyone go like this. When, while, as, if, or that. When, while, as, if, or that. Do that. When, while, as, if, or that. This is the key to Ojibwe language. When, while, as, if, or that. When, while, as, if, or that. Alrighty. That's a conjunct. That's conjunct. Conjunct is when, while, as, if, or that. Yeah, right on, man. Power to the people. Soon the revolution will begin. <laughs> you thought I was, I was uh, Yeah. I was concentrating. You did good. You taught us something new. When, while, as, if, or that. Uh, all right. Uh, now, looking at this sentence here. Which part is the conjunct? While. Uh -huh. And I was watching you. Is that a command? Is that a conjunct? No. Is it acting as a noun? No. It's it's what kind of a, us? It's a pendant form. It's independent form. Independent. Yep, it's independent. Because you could put, I was watching you. That's a complete sentence, and you're like, oh, you're creepy. <laughs> I was watching you while you were eating. That's even more creepy. <laughs> and I noticed that you don't use a fork. <laughs> you should use a fork when you are eating. Okay. You should use a fork when you are eating. Okay. Oh, boy. Tell me about the sense. What? What's going on? Everything you've learned so far. Okay, so, so first one I heard was when you are eating. What? Tell me about what is that? What's going on? Conjuncts. What that means is, uh, and then that means I got to go to the conjunct section of the charts because we're going to get into charts, and and. and what kind of verb is it? What type of verb is it? VTI, VTA? Is there a subject and an object? No, no. No, I have a yes and a no. The question is, is there a subject and an object? Gowing. Is there a subject? All verbs have subjects. But not all verbs have uh, objects. In this one, when you... I, or you, when, you should use for When you are eating... Uh, has a subject. Who's the subject or what is the subject? You are the subject. And what is the verb? Yep. When you are eating, the verb is being used in the conjunct. And is it a V-A-I or a V-I-I? Are you animate or inanimate? Animate. So therefore, it's a what? It is a V-A-I, the subject, you are eating when you're eating when you're eating is in the conjunct form when you are eating so it's a VAI in the conjunct form when you are eating this is what your brain has to process which set of the charts which set of the conjugations do I go to we're gonna if we're gonna do that in Ojibwe and figure out how to do it we need to go to the VAI section of these charts and you need to go to the section that is conjunct and you need to find the subject you we're going to do that pretty soon. Don't do it now. All right. Let's look back at So, so far, we do know that it's a VAI conjunct. And I'm going to make note of that. And it's a VAI conjunct. I mean, not, yeah, conjunct. It is conjunct. In the conjunct form. So, let's, uh, let's look at the other half of the sentence. You should use a fork. It, it, yeah, it, it crosses both, but it's not in the command chart for Ojibwe, so we're going to say it's an independent. You should use a fork. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm forcing you to, but you should. Yeah, like you should use a fork. I'm not saying you have to do it now, otherwise you're going to the back of the line. Nothing like that. 
Would an independent almost be like a suggestion? Well, it's a statement. Well, right, but like most of the time it would be like statement slash suggestion. Yeah, mine are because yeah, because it's easier for me to put a conjunct with oh, a suggestion. Okay. It could be. I, I I like it that you are using a fork when you're eating. Oh, let me. That'll be the next one. You must be from Red Lake, because all those other salves over there are not using forks from White Earth. <laughs> I'm looking at Becky. I'm from White Earth. She's not even from White Earth. I didn't use a fork. See, she didn't either. She was eating her taco like this. <laughs> That's because we didn't have forks. <laughs> oh yeah, then the finger looking good. All right, let's get back to this sense. Uh, you should use a fork. Uh, it's not a command because you have an option. A command is do it now or you're in trouble. I'm bossing you around. So I'm going to say this is independent. Uh, I should have asked you guys what it was if it's not a command. But uh, what kind of verb is it? You, is there a subject and an object? Mm -hmm. uh, you is the subject. Is there an object? Fork, what's the verb? You should use a fork. You should use it. And what is it? A fork. You should use a fork. So therefore, it's a transitive verb. That means I'm narrowing it down. Well, I know it's a transitive, but is the object, uh, is the object animate or inanimate? It's inanimate. You should use a fork. You should use a box. <laughs> uh, so it's a VTI. And you should use a fork. Is that, and we said it, I said, no, it's not a command, even though it sounds like one. You should use a fork. I'm just giving a simple statement. You should use a fork, period. Capitalize the beginning, put a period at the end. So that's an independent. So now we go back and we found the answer that it's a V, uh, what was it, a VTI? VTI independent. I'm just going to put a comma there. I don't know if that's proper grammar, but just so we can separate and see them easier. You should use a fork when you are eating. Now, now this one is, woo! That's hard, huh? Now, check this one out. Let's, let's break it down. Dun, 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 dun. No, that's hammer time, not break it down. All right. I like, so I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat just to help us out. I like it. What is it? It is that you are using a fork while you are eating. Now, so let me ask you, in this, uh, there's boss man, get you ogi ma and ini. Again. Anin, ajayayan. Oh, <laughs> 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 Uh, it's our superintendent, uh, Tim uh, Lutz, uh, boots on the ground, Tim Lutz. And uh, and his goal, his uh, his personal goal is to learn Ojibwe in one year. And he stops by and he works on sentences with me and asks me questions and he works on it. And that's, that's awesome. How many superintendents in the universe are working on their Ojibwe? Other than the immersion. Tim I know it's some that I just know um, that one that's fluent. Oh, he was born into the language. Yeah, He's he a first speaker. Yeah. Unfair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Really unfair. Yeah. Never gonna happen for me, bro. Yeah. So. It'll happen. Maybe conditions or. And so Okay. Yeah. So I just just wanted to thank you all for supporting the language and culture, and it's important. I think history. 
if I were to go to Mexico and work for a year, I would need to learn the language, even mm -hmm. know the culture. It's important yep. to do that. Yeah. This is a nation that's uh, whose language and culture and tradition should be honored. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we're going to finish. What are we going to do, Wes? Tell me. Oh, while well, he was in there, what? He said something really cool. Hey, it was awesome. Did you guys hear that? Our non-native superintendent said everyone should be learning the language if they're working with Indian kids. <laughs> yeah, I agree. All right, so continue on. Is it um, recording? Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, I like that you are using a fork while you're eating. Tell me about the sense. What's happening? There's a bunch of stuff yeah. going on here. But it's a V-I-I. -I. Which one? The I like it. I like it. Okay, so we know we got that V-I-I. -I. We got that part down because it says it. Is it, it oh, oh. Wait a minute. Time out. I like it. Is there a subject and an object? Yeah. yeah. The subject is I and the verb is like. Yeah. Is there an object? I like it. And what it is is a big, long statement. And so we're going to switch this to what? VTI. Uh huh. And uh, is I like it? Is that independent? Conjunct? Imperative? I uh, hear, yeah, I like it. You could put a period at the end if you want. I like it. Period. But this, we're going to go further. So this is going to be independent. Oh. And I'm going to put a comma here just so that it's easier to see. I don't know if that's proper English grammar. I like it. And what is it that you like? Um, that you're using a fork. That you are using That's a fork. Right. That's a good chunk right there. Yep. Now that, okay. When, while, as, if, or that. Uh, that. Is in, in what form is that? Conjunct. Conjunct. Okay. Yeah. That's the magic. So this is, uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. we do know it's conjunct, conjunct, and then uh, while that you are using a fork. Now, is there a subject and an object in this phrase? Yeah. Now, who's the subject or what is the subject? You. And what's the verb? And, and what's the object? So this is a transitive verb, right? Okay, what kind of transit? VTA or VTI? VTI. Okay. Uh, you are using him or you are using it. So it's a VTI. All right. So we know it's a VTI. Now there's another park in park part in here. While you are eating, tell me what is that? What verb? What verb type? In what form? Conjunct. Conjunct. We got a bingo. Because <laughs> it's when, when it's when it's when, while, as, if, or that. Right on. <laughs> right on. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Is it what kind of verb is it? It is a VAI. Uh, who's the subject? Is there an object? Nope. You're just simply verbing. You are verbing. You are eating. So it is a VAI. And you are animate. We didn't say the box is eating. We said you are eating. So it's VAI. All right. And, and, and that, that's uh, what we would do is we'd figure it out. We'd break it up. Uh, what verb type and what verb form we switch it all into Ojibwe. And then you do it long enough, and pretty soon you don't even need to do the English. I haven't made it that far yet. Sometimes I can. I can think in Ojibwe barely. I still think in English. I have to say the English part first and then break it down. You use it enough, do it enough. Pretty soon you, you don't have to think about the English. All is, right. Is, I got a question. Uh-huh. Is that what you're saying? It should be the fourth column? Because I missed that. That imperative, independent, conjunct, change, conjunct. 
when you're up referencing, there were only three columns. Okay. You're talking about okay. That we column. have a question, and this is good review. So we are going to back up, pause for the cause. Um, there are uh, these letters, one, these VAI, these, these letters, these acronyms really should have four sections because they cover four sections, but some of them are left out for convenience. It's not counting these ones. These don't count in these letters. They kind no, they don't. These, these have nothing to do with the letters, but what type of verb is the acronyms? So there is a VII means there's a verb and the subject is inanimate. It is not transitive, meaning there's no object. So you have to ask for, there's like four sections. You could have four letters if you want, but it's easier just to write the three letters that there is. Because notice there's one, two, three that there is. The fourth one, there isn't an object. So they only put three there. And uh, this one, a VAI, there really should be four sections here. There should be another, another one over here somewhere, but it's not. Because it says it's a verb animate, and because it's intransitive, there is no object. Okay? Yeah. And, you know, it really should be a, a it should be like N, uh, there's none. And, and it should be there's no object. And it really should be, a, it really should be the subject is either animate or intransitive. And it should be like this. This is how it really should be. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, there should be four. It could be either one. The subject could be the other one. Is it transitive? Oh. Uh, yeah, it's a trans trans it's transferring onto an animate object. But it's it's that's messy. Yeah. And you know, some uh, linguists they don't even use a verb because they're all verbs on this one. So they'll just say animate in transitive or transitive inanimate. Okay, so good question. So the acronyms tell you if it's transitive and if there's a subject and an object. But all of that, the VTA can be used in the independent form, dependent form, the imperative, independent, conjunct, conjunct change. And this is the magic one. If you learn this one, you're off to the races, which means when, while, when as, if, or that. <clears throat> That's the German side. Down. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 this one. Oh, oh. Part of me. <laughs> I am not a racist. I'm only German. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I better shut up. <laughs> 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 it's, oh, let me push the pause button here. Why? It yeah, was on pause, right? No. <laughs> I was I was pushing the envelope, but oh, you, you can pull a little. All right, impaired. I am German. I get to say German yeah. jokes. I'm Ojibwe. I get to say Ojibwe jokes. <laughs> Part of me thinks I'm superior. Okay. Oh, Part of me right. knows I am superior. <laughs> <laughs> You're bad. bad. Then stick your hand out here. I'm gonna have to hit the erase button real quick here. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right, uh, uh, <laughs> all right, so you can use them as an in, in imperative independent conjunct or a change conjunct form. Those, these are not part of the letter, the acronyms. All right, now let us continue with our knowledge and learning. Uh, one day, I, one night I had a dream. The creator was showing me the blueprints on how to build a tree. And it had all these circles and lines, and I looked just like this. And now it makes sense. Wow. Yeah, but it was, it was a little more sophisticated than this. It had a bunch of little scientific, and, and I knew exactly the entire design and the blueprints. Kind of like, uh, what was that? Time bandits. They knew how to make shrubs, shrubberies. I knew how to make a tree. But uh, now it's starting to make sense. But this is uh, this is the Ojibwe language. What verb type is it, and what form is it? You can use it in positive and negative. Uh, yeah, I like it. Now, I have a question. That is a sentence. It, uh, well, tell me about it. I have a question. Is there is is this a transitive verb? Is there a subject and an object? Yeah, the subject. The subject is what, and what's the object? 
have. No, that's a, a verb. Question. That's the verb. Oh, a question. The yeah. question. I have a question. I have a question. It, it was you. Would a question be animate or in in your best guess? Mm -hmm. Inanimate. So if you don't know, you can default to inanimate. Here's a trick in Ojibwe. If you don't know if it's animate or inanimate, default to default to inanimate. So I don't know if question is animate or inanimate, but because I think it's a thing, I think it's a it. So I'm going to just call it intransitive. I mean, not inanimate. Let's look at the sentence. I have a question. What is the verb in the sentence? Have you possess it? I have. I have a question. Now, is this a? Uh, it, uh, it, is I forgot. Is it transitive? Yes. Yes, because there's a subject and object, so we know that much. We do know it's a verb, right? Now, uh, uh, is it inanimate or animate? Is it VTI or VTA? VTI, because we said that question is inanimate. And is this in the independent form imperative, independent conjunct, or conjunct change? It is independent. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to throw another sentence up here. I have a brown. No, I have a... I have a brown one. All right. Tell me about this sentence. Now I'm tre I'm treating be cheating because I'm using a, a change conjunct. I have one that is brown. Let me put it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me go back up. We're gonna look at a con. Oh, we're switching to conjunct. I think. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to conjunct. Change. Where is that? Here it is. This is the uh, cheat sheet for conjunct change. The one or the ones. The one that left. Uh, the one that is brown. The brown one. The one or the ones. That's kind of the cheat. And uh, so I had so much trouble at BSU with uh, Master Teacher Earl Campbell, no Earl Nyholm. <laughs> yeah, Earl Campbell Nyholm. Naomi, no, that's Naomi Campbell. Careful. <laughs> Anyways. I could not get change conjunct when the verb acts as a noun. And I know some people that are still struggling with it. And uh, it's just when you use the verb as a noun, like the speaker, the swimmer, the runner, mm. the ones that are talking, the ones that are playing, the ones that left. Oh. Those are all nouns. The ones I'm thinking of, that one thing, that one, the, the cheap one, the expensive one, kind of has one built into it. Even though not all the time, but you can switch it to use the one or the ones. I, the one that am meeting. Don't you have good examples of those? I mean, I could have wrote them all down. You could have wrote them. Why don't you take them all down? All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's recorded. Okay. You guys give me examples of uh, a verb acting as a noun. The one blinking, the one uh, limping, the one kissing. <laughs> of course, it's hard to kiss by yourself, right? <laughs> Unless they're going around kissing everybody, the one kissing, the one going around kissing, a kissing, a kissing booth. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, uh, the one limping, the one kissing, the one laughing. <laughs> uh -oh. The one who who smelt it. Ga ga bijman dunk. 
Uh, the one, <laughs> the one who dealt it. <laughs> there we go. It works. I don't even know how to tell you. The one who dealt it. The one who dealt it smelt it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, um, the one talking. I went in. Oh God, gigi I went in. Oh God, 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 gigi The one who is talking. Uh, the one who is singing, or the one who who is who is singing, <laughs> singing, uh, or you could just say the singer, right? The singer. The speaker. Oh yeah. Uh, because of change of the swimmer. The one exiting. The, or the one that exited. The one that left. The one that came in. Yeah, you know, I was like some uh, handsome man comes walking in and Christina goes to Becky. Hey, who's that one that just came in there? Because because you're looking guy. for the one who's that one good looking the good looking one. Mm, good. The good. <laughs> he smelled good. The good smelling one. There's only one in the whole group. <laughs> <laughs> the one that smells good. Yes. Now when he left would be conjunct. But okay. We're gonna only use con. Yeah. yeah, you could do that. So you see how conjunct the one that smelled good. When he left, maybe he smudged as he was leaving. He went by and smoked good. Or he's got your favorite cologne on there. I, I don't know. I, I'm terrible with colognes. The one that smells good. Uh, okay, so give me some other conjunct. The one that entered. That uh, one that exit. The one that, the one that. Okay, the one that sat down. Yep. The one that stood up. Stood up. Okay. Or the ones, uh, they, uh, I'm just tending to go that way. Let me try to find someone that doesn't have a one. The ones. How about the speaker? You could say the one that is speaking, or the, or the one that's going to speak. Uh, the one that is going to speak. Yep, yeah. the one that spoke. Okay. Um, okay, now I'm going to ask you guys to come up with when a verb is acting like a noun. Okay. You know, you could even do the squeaky one. How do you spell squeaky? Oh, yeah, e. No, it's not. Say it again. Oh, yeah, but you got to have that U with it. Okay, so give me another, uh, give me a, a example of a conjunct change. Which means the verb is acting like a noun. The loud one. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's here's go. Now, interesting, isn't it? What you want to eat. What you want to eat. Is that a thing? What is a noun? A noun is a person, place, or a thing, right? What you want to eat. Not what do you want to eat. What you want to eat. So if I say, what is it that you want to eat? That you want to eat. Let's put it there. Let's do that. Instead of what you want to eat. 
that thing you want to eat or that person <laughs> so the thing that you want to eat so it's a verb like wa we sinian wa wa mijian what you want to eat away go name what is it away go name wa mijian what is it that you want to eat what is it that you want to eat there we go that you want to eat so that that whatever you're desiring to eat the thing that you want to eat whether it's the taco or the uh, pizza it's a, it's a noun right what you want to eat or what you ate here you go so it's getting a little bit uh, shadier it's kind of getting more if you're here but it's still a noun what you ate Uh, like you said, what did you eat? So I'm asking you for the noun, right? What is it that you ate? What you ate? Uh, uh, let me see. The one who who ate it. Okay. Yeah. Who barfed on my fry bread? Uh. Who ate my taco? How oh, Wes? Who ate my taco? Yeah, poor Wes. Those guys short suited us over there. We bought it. We bought eleven tacos. They brought us ten. So I took one and I tore it in half and ate them both. He still didn't have a taco. We all could have given him the the one who ate it. So I said, Who is the one that ate my taco? Who ate it? We could do, yeah. So the one that who is the one that ate it? Who ate it? So I'm asking for a noun. Who ate my taco? He did. All right. So these are conjunct chains. The verb is acting as a noun. Who saw her? Who is the one that saw her? See, that's why I like to use the one. The one makes it more clearly a uh, 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 verb acting as a noun. Who is the one that saw her? So instead of just saying the one that, yeah, the one that saw her, or yeah, the one that saw her. The one that saw her. So these are the conjuncts. Conjunct change, when the verb is acting like a noun. All right. The speaker is coming. The speaker is coming this evening. We're going to do this sentence and we're going to take a break. Which part of this is conjunct change? Which one is it the verb is acting as a noun? The speaker. Okay, in this case, uh, and the speaker is that a V, a V T I V T A or V A I? The the speaker. What is huh? V A I. Because there's the, the he's he's speaking. It doesn't say the one that's going to speak about it. Or the one that's going to talk about him or her, or talk about it. It's just the one that's speaking. So we're going to go with the VAI, and it's not a command, it's not independent, it's not conjunct. It's change conjunct because it's a verb acting as a noun. All right. So we have a, a VAI, and it's change conjunct. And I'm going to put a comma there, just so it's easier for us to see. Uh, so the speaker is now the subject, right? We have a verb. The verb change form is actually the su is the uh, subject, right? The speaker is coming. The speaker is coming. Is that a, what kind of verb is that? 
The speaker is coming this evening. Say again. Why is it a VAI? Because there's only a subject and no object. The speaker's not doing anything to anybody. Not doing anything to the nighttime, not changing it into daytime. The speaker is just coming. Not the speaker is bringing it. The speaker is bringing him or her. The speaker is just simply coming. So, is coming. Is uh, is that independent? Conjunct. The speaker is coming. That's actually the set. That's a sentence. The speaker is coming. Uh, it's, uh, yep, it is independent. And what did we say? What kind of verb is it? Independent. And it's a VAI. And so I'm going to say this evening, I'm going to change it to cheat a little bit to make it easier when it is evening. The speaker is coming when it's evening or this evening. So when it is evening, uh, when it is evening, uh, what verb type and what verb form? So when it is evening? Yep. So that's it's conjunct because it has a when, while, as, if, or that. So it's conjunct. We do know that much. And uh, what type of verb is it? Hold on. Uh, what type of verb is it when it's evening? Here's the hint. It. It's a V-I-I because we're seeing it's a it. It's inanimate. Like a box. A box is inanimate. Evening time is inanimate. I just know that because I looked it up a million times in the dictionary. It is evening is a VII. And, and, that, uh, and, and we don't say when she is evening. Uh, we could, but I don't know in what language. All right. Uh, so we're going to say conjunct, and it was a VII. Okay. So we have exercised. Uh, uh, we have exercised. We have exercised the verb types and the verb forms. Uh, imperative is when you're bossing someone. Sit down. Shut up. That's an imperative. Okay. And every teacher should know that, and bus driver should know that in the district. <laughs> but we could use a. Uh, uh, we could we uh, independent is is a sentence you can uh, put a punct you can capitalize the beginning, put a punctuation mark at the end like a question mark or, or a period. Can you say will you please sit down and make that independent as well? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Could you please sit down? Same as will could would will you sit down? Okay. Uh, could you sit down? That's independent. Uh, and they could say uh, no, I can't because uh, both my legs are broken and I have casts and crutches, and <laughs> yeah. All right, stand in the corner. No. <laughs> no, well, let me help you to wherever you want us to get comfortable. All right, so that would be independent. Uh, uh, could, could you, could, would, should are independent statements. Sit down now. Could you sit down now? That's still uh, uh, independent. Now, could you sit down now? No, but I will in a few minutes after I get everything set up. When I'm done... Ready to. No, just kidding. <laughs> conjunct. Conjunct is when it means when, when, while, as, if, or that. All right? Conjunct. It has to be said in conjunction with other words. Can't stand by itself. Because if you say when, uh, when I'm hungry, it's not a full sentence. It has to be said with more words in conjunction. When I'm hungry, I eat food. Uh, when I'm hungry, I eat. V-A-I. When I eat hungry, I eat potatoes, VTA, when I'm hungry, all right? Uh, and that's conjunct, when, while, as, if, or that. Conjunct change is when the verb acts like a noun. Um, the one that came in, the one that's sitting, the one that's talking, uh, uh, 
the one that I'm thinking of. And you kind of, the, if you use the one, kind of more clarifies it. That's the cheat for that. The cheat for conjunct is when, while, as, after that. The cheat for change conjunct is the one or the ones that are. The one that is red, the one that is blue. The ones that are red, the ones that are blue. The big ones, the little ones. The cheap ones, the expensive ones. Those are them. So we shall take a break. And when we get back, uh, we're here till 3. Let's take a half hour. Do you want to take a half hour or 15? I'm starving, so I got to eat. Okay, we'll take a half hour and we'll be back at 129. No, 125. No, 135. I'm sorry, what time? 138. 135? 137. <laughs> and if you have a clan, that means 132. <laughs> Pause for the cause. Anway uh, bida. Wes is going to take over, and uh, this is what we covered in our our uh, agenda. We've made it down to uh, verb types and verb forms. We're supposed to finish this by the end of the day, by 3 o'clock. So he has one hour to cover all this. He can do it. No. So, no. <laughs> uh, the, the next part we're going to work on is key, and I'm just going to bring it up. And you're going to look on page 14 of this. And that would be right there. Okay. So we're going to look at all these numbers here. Uh, 1S, 2S, 3S. What is 1S? S means singular. P means plural. 2 and 1, uh, one means me. 2 means you. 3 means uh, not you or me. That her. Her or him. And, and four is him or her's friend or someone in association with them. And X means somebody, but we're not saying who. It's an unspecified actor. And I will turn it over to us. A sitting ovation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yep, that's where we will start. So not page 14? Uh, well, no, I'm just looking at oh. page 14 because we're going to talk, talk about key. Um, and uh, there's a good example. Why do I need to know what what it is? Because it's going to say it's gonna say who to whom. Uh, 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 uh. And then, then Wes is going to get into, uh, start doing, uh, start actually using charts. Alrighty. Well, my name is Wes Jordan, if you guys didn't know. Just been kicking, chilling. Um, I started on, um, different parts of these. <laughs> it's different every session. So I'm just kind of waiting, 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 waiting for my turn to get going and stuff so it's gonna take me a little bit to jump in the gear here I want to see where we're at as far as the key so if you turn to page that's a four it's five page five in your chart to navigate through the universe of the Ojibwe language. We have this key, and if you, I should put 14 back up there, so we can take a look. And we'll start with VAI. V -A -I. So, if we take a look at VAI, independent in the positive, we're gonna stick on this realm right here first. And we see these numbers first, 1S, 2S, 3S, 1P, 2, 1P. And on the key, if you see ever see a 1, and we'll take a look at 1, that's talking about first-person perspective. Can you use... Yeah, I was just thinking that, too. <laughs> the last time we were 
yeah. navigating this way. So um, if we take a look at one S and we looked at that in the chart and says, I, me, or my singular. So it's first person perspective. It's talking about me or I, my this, my that, whatever it is in my second person singular. I'm talking to you. Uh, one person, just you in general, that second person, the second oh. person away from me would be you. Uh, third person singular, him or her. What does it say on here? She or he, him or her, or him or that H with the, um, with the, uh, man, I'm way off on this. Right here, this little H with the slash, forward slash, that's just the same as saying him or her. Okay, so third person. Fourth person, someone or something, singular, plural, associated, related to the third person. So if I'm talking and I say GNU's, whether it's animate or inanimate, GNU's jacket, or no, we'd have to have something animate, GNU's brother. GNU sister, okay, GNU is, I'm talking to you, second person, GNU is third person, and his other sister, brother is fourth person, perspective, so that's what the number four is, when you see four, it, um, person, is that what it says, someone, something, could be singular or plural, associated with GNU, so that would be his sister, I'm talking in fourth person, I don't know. It happens, it happens a lot in the language when you talk fourth person, so that's why that's there. X, talking about unspecified actor, someone, some people, or people in general. Um, the example we had for X was, I don't even have it in my notes either, but X was referring to someone, um, the power. Uh, what's happening at the Paul or I'm trying to think of how this was used. X, just stay away from X for now. It's too confusing <laughs> to talk about. Unspecified actor, so um, let's put that one aside. We'll come back to that one. And then you still have your one, two, three, but there's P's on this one. So first person plural, we over here, but not including GNU. So if I'm talking to GNU and I'm saying we, excluding you, GNU, we're, we're, we're having a good time. Okay. We're having a good time. Not you, but us over here. Okay. That's first person plural. First person, all the people that are first person, we, us, excluding him. Now, if I want to exclude and include him, we're going to have this uh, key that says 2-1 and uh, GNU comes walking in GNU, I tell GNU in the language, we're going to have a good time and he's included too because I'm talking to him, we, we're all going to have a good time as a 2-1 is your example of your key okay, but we're we're, we're 1-P we're going to have a good time without him <laughs> he's out of here he's supposed to be taking notes but uh looking back 2p 2 plural talking to you all number 2 is you plural you all I'm talking to you all you all uh, sit down you all eat your food talking to you that way and then third person GNU and the crowd of people over there they're they they're doing something, them, plural. So there's more than one. That's the P. So just got to remember, S singular, P is plural. And then one P, it's us, but not you. Two, one, us, including the one you're speaking to, which we'll find. We'll, we'll see the examples of that when we um, go forward. Um, let's see, one is first person, two is second person, the one's being talked to, third is the person, one being talked about, fourth is the fourth person associated with someone else, also known as third person, albeitive. Okay, you don't need to know that right now. 
So we are going to take a look at some examples to use these. VAI imperatives. Where is VAI imperatives? That is on page nine. Page nine. All right. So page nine, we have this chart that says imperative. There's a line, a column that says positive. There's a line that says negative. And don't worry about the delayed part because we won't get into that. Now, we have words, and we need a VAI, and then the example we use a lot, because it's a high-frequency word, is um, we need a, a VAI that ends with a vowel, and the one we frequently use is we sine. We sine. So I'm going to take a look at, I'm going to go into our notes, and we need a where ends in a vowel, so I'll put the title V A I um, imperatives. Okay, so something that ends in a vowel, and that is the word we sine. Who knows what we sine is? Who is eating? She or he? You'll see this a lot in the dictionary. Sheer S slash he. So let's sheer he is eating. All right. So now we want to look back at. Are you on page nine? Nine, number nine. Yeah. Okay. At your chart, we have second person singular. I want to command somebody, one person. I want to command. I'm looking at somebody. I'm saying you. And we're going to use our word eat. All right, so our chart, if we look at our chart, if I can pull it up here real quick, where did it go? Right here. We have the verb that's going to go in front, and then we're just going to put this ending on the back. All right, so we're going to tell one person, we sinne, and then we're going to add N on the back, so it's we sinin. Uh, two S. We send in, and it's a command, so we're going to put the exclamation point. If you didn't notice, Gnu is putting exclamation points in there on his commands. Mm -hmm. You are telling one person, eat. One person. And you're, that's your imperative, that's your command. All right. What's next on here? 2P. We have our word we sine. And now what our chart tells us to do is either add G or add yoke to the back of that. If you see that on page 9, under dash V, it says 2P. You add either G, so it's the word becomes we sinig if you're telling more than one person. Okay, 2P two, two is plural. Or... A lot of times you'll hear in Red Lake, we sing yuk. All right, we sing. They're both. You'll hear both, but more times than often, you're gonna hear the yuk used in Red Lake area. The first one, we sing. So I'm telling you all to eat. We sing. Or you can say someone might say we sing yuk. We sing yuk. We sin yuk. Because that O, remember our O is a short O, we want to make that O is as short as possible. We sin yuk. All right. Navigating, we'll just go right down this whole chart here. 2 1. 2 1. So we're going to have, wow, I don't want to do that. Um, 2 1 is talking about uh, first person and the second person, which is Everybody, let's, it's a let's command. Let's do this. And our word is we sine. And we're going to add, it, our chart tells us to, to add da. We sine da. And that's going to be a command. 
forgot to put this. You all eat. And then this is because I'm included in it too. I'm the one. You guys are the two. So this is telling everyone to let's eat. All right. And that's that for a, a verb that ends in with a vowel. Um, we're going to use that pattern there. If we have a verb that ends in an N, and um, there's there's a lot. There's Bungashin, Jingashin, um, Bizantan. I think those are all verbs. The example that we've been using, and it just makes it easier, is uh, Bungashin. Bung. Well, first we're gonna it, because it ends in the N, we're gonna use bungishin, which means she or he falls. All right. So now we have two S. We want to tell. I don't know why we would command somebody to fall. <laughs> I don't know if we're <laughs> if we're telling somebody to fall down. Let's change this. Let's. <laughs> that's weird. Let's go. Um, um, let's see, walk is bimose that ends in a vowel. Let's use jingishin. Jingishin. She or he lays down. Pretty sure that's what that means. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we want to tell one person to lay down. 2s, you, one person singular. We're going to go jingishin. And then our chart tells us to put a I N on that. If you look on on your chart, this part right here, we're on because Jingashin ends with an N. Um, this is going to tell us to put an in at the end of that word. So now our word Jingashin turns into Jingashin in. Jingashin in. Uh, lay down. You're talking to your kids. Time for bed. You're going to tell one of them. Jingishin in. One person. Alright. 2P. We'll put our word in there. Jingishin. 2P tells us to either add ok or yok. Ok or yok. And. Or o yok. Okay. So if we add jingishin ok to this. There's the word Jingishinuk. You all lay down. Maybe you have a house full of kids, or you know, whatever it whatever it is you're chaperoning on a trip, or you want everyone to lay down. Jingishinuk. Or the other example, like I said, yoke is used a lot in Red Lake area, not so much in Cass Lake. I don't think. I don't want to separate. Good reservations like that but um i think that's why the example is on here too so jingishin oyok uh, which equals you all lay down jingishin oyok to me the first one sounds easier to say though jingishin oyok as compared to Jingashinoyok, you're adding an extra symbol, a syllable in there with this Oyok. Jingashinoyok. All right. And then to say, let's all, you know, we're all shutting the lights off, we're all going to bed. And our chart tells us to say, da. So two is you all plus me. Jingashinda. Let's lay down. All right. And then I'm going to go with our M's, and then I'll ask for some examples, or if you guys can navigate your chart. Uh, VAIs that end in the letter M. Um, an example that we used was biz and dumb. Biz and dumb. She or he listens. So let's just continue on with that. Biz, zin, dum. 
period equals shear he listens period independent sentence by itself I am looking for the singular command the singular imperative to tell someone to listen so if we take a look at our chart uh, there's a rule on this one Okay, there's no rules on these ones. There's no rules on the end of a vowel or an N. But on an M, there's a rule here, and I should put an asterisk here to fix that. Um, drop the M off the root and then add these ones here. So we're going to drop the M off of Bizindam. And for singular, to tell one person to listen, the word now changes to Bizindam. We drop the M off there. And now I'm telling Becky Bizin done. And that's the one person singular person command to listen. One person. Alright. I wanna bring this down. How do I do that? M's. Alright. Who can give me the word for the plural to the word bizindum? Look at your chart. What happens? See now his asterisk isn't on there. That makes it confusing. Don't get confused. So the asterisk, you drop the M. That should be only on this one right here. Making a this is the first one, and it looks like the second one, too. The last one for the let's. No, oh, it drops on all of it. Never mind. <laughs> you're, you're still going to drop the M on Biz in the Mook? Well, we'll get there, but um, it's still it still adds an M on there for his rule, so... Anyway, you all, you all listen. Biz in the muck. Biz in the muck. Or the other example. Moyok. Biz in the moyok. Moyok. I don't know why that sounds funny saying it, but the first one works clear it's it flows a lot better so whatever you find that fits better with how you flow and how you say it that's which one you're going to use and you're going to go with bizindamuk or bizindamoyok uh you, you all uh listen and your tone of voice too is <laughs> how people are going to take your command bizindamuk what? Just kidding. <laughs> All right, two one. You and me. Let's command. Bizinda. Bizinda. So we drop the M, and we add N D A A. All right. Bizindanda. Everyone say that. Bizindanda. Yeah, let's listen. Maybe Ganu's uh, trying to teach and nobody's listening, and I come by and I say, Bizindanda. <laughs> let's listen. Let's all listen. Let's all, everybody. All right. So we already navigated through VAIs. And there's plenty of other words you just got to think of. Why um... is, I have a question. Yep, yep. So for Bizindam, why is it such a aggressive uh at the end? Like with the A N. Like business dot or dumb or I always feel like my students make fun of me when I try to tell them to mm -hmm. do this. So okay. an example like how it remember how Gnu said how that flows, it yeah. kinda of flows along and then the end kinda of pops off. Yeah. Is that what you're asking? The bizin like, done. Sounds like I'm being a mean aggressive. Um I suppose <laughs> if you th if you think like it's aggressive and it it's not yeah it's just the way the flow is the fight okay. you know so can you say it with the a -N at the end? all right let's try 
Let's try all saying this. Let's say let's say the word biz and dumb. Everybody say it. Biz and dumb. All right. So that's here. He listens. Let's try this word right here. Now it's biz and done. I look over there and I say, oh, biz and done. Biz and done. I'm biz and done. It pops off at the end. Um, it kind of does sound mean, but it, it, it's not. Biz and done. Maybe you give them give a look over here. Biz and done. Biz and done. Okay, something quick like that. Um, if the whole class is going nuts, and I, I put these in my classroom perspectives, like, all right, you biz and done. The whole class biz in the muk. Biz in the muk. Nashke ma biz in the muk. I'll tell everybody to look and listen. Uh, okay. Biz in the muk. Yeah. What's that? Um, uh, oh, oh. Uh, um, for that, and that would be a little bit. So nashke is kind of a attention getter, telling you, telling someone to look. Nashke. Nashke. So let me put that in notes here too. Nashke. Oma. That's that's the attention getter to kids. Nashke equals uh look. It's like if you if birds fly over, you can say that. Oma's uh, talking about location right here. Shke Oma. So you'll see you'll hear elders shorten it too. Like first speakers, they'll just say Shke Oma, Shke Oma, but they're saying Nashke Oma. Okay, so, but that's an attention getter. Hey, Shke Oma, bizin done. Okay, you're getting one's attention. Shke Oma, bizin done. Telling them to listen. Or the whole class, it works for more than one too. Shke Oma, bizin the muk. You can say to students if they're all talking and it's time to start learning. And uh, this one you wouldn't say unless you're in like, um, say you're in a gym for a gathering or something. Mm -hmm. You tell your, bizin dun da, you tell your class, bizin dun da. Let's, let's listen to whatever's happening over here. So, all right. Um, random examples. Well, I'll let you guys come up with uh, a word. I need a V-A-I that ends in a vowel. V-A-I that ends in a vowel. Agendaso. Agendaso. Uh, Period. Equals she or he is reading. Or counting. Agendaso. Okay. Everybody say agendaso. All right. So she or he is reading or it can be counting too. It's the same thing there. There, agendaso. All right. So two, you want to tell someone read or count. Or maybe you're doing a math lesson. You're going to tell one person to do what and how are you going to do that? Or we're gonna add what? Just the letter N, right? Agandason, yeah. ahausa, agandasa, read oh. or count. All right, one person agandason. Bizanigo, you can say bizanigo agandason. Bizanigo means that, that whenever you're ready. All right. To tell more than one person, what are we going to add? Agendasoji. Agendasog. Is there another example? Yep, yep. Agendasoyok. You all read. It's reading time, or it's math time. You all count. All good. All right. And then the last one, two, one, you, me. Let's do this. Let's count. Let's read. Agenda so da. Agenda so da. Let's read or let's count. 
Count Dracula. Count from Sesame Street. Ugandasso. Ugandasso da. <laughs> All right. So let's go over this again. The verb is Ugandasso. Everybody say Ugandasso. To command one person, someone's over here, they want them to read. We're going to say Ugandasso. Ugandasso. Agendasog. All right, commanding everybody to read. Everybody count. Agendasog. Agendasog. Or the other example, Agendasoyok. Agendasoyok. Last one to command everybody. Let's do it. Let's count. Let's read. Agendasoda. Agendasoda. All right. Yeah. So for the 2P, or it's the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of like a sound to G. Like, can you say it again? Yeah, agandasog. So it almost sounds like you're saying. K. It's like a so it it's kind of a um it's that G K. Yeah. Okay. Um, sound to it. It's a soft agandasog. Okay. So, so you can hear it in there, yeah, agandasog, or agandasoyok. So now you can hear the K more on this one. But you can kind of hear it in there too. So, but they're similar. That's what makes them similar is that GK. Agandasuk, Agandasuyuk. For some reason, this is going smoother than Guinea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I need an example of. Uh, I need an, an example. Nope. <laughs> example of VAI with that ends in a N. M, N, N. Example, I gave Zhinga Shin was the first one. How would we look for a word? Remember we said you fall, Bunga Shin, Zhinga Shin. Man, we had this one list. There's not many words that end in, let's just use Bunga Shin. And tell somebody to fall. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe you're playing... Ring around a rosy or something. Yeah. Fall. Fall down. <laughs> Someone's not falling down and you're telling somebody to fall down. Bunga shin. Um, she or he falls. All right. And to someone who hasn't went yet, give me the command to one person for bunga shin. What are we going to add? Right here. We're going to add what two letters? In. in to that. Now we have Bungashin turns into Bungashin in. Bungashin in. Uh, fall. Fall! Exclamation point! It looks like I'm yelling at somebody when I put those, but that's that's telling us that's our signal in the in the, in the language, that it's a command. Okay. Um, fall, one person. <laughs> All right. Next one, two P, telling everybody to fall. Bungishin. Bungishinuk. And the other example, Bungishin Oyok. Yeah, Bungishin Oyok. Uh, you all fall. I don't know if it. Um, fall down sounds better. Mm -hmm. You could be telling somebody to fall to the side. I think. Can't fall up. <laughs> Unless you're clumsy and fall up the stairs. Yep. You we've, have all, we've all done that before. <laughs> I know. Um, and then let's. Let's fall. Ring around them, Rosie. Let's all fall down. Bunga shin. Da. Bunga shin da. Let's fall down. All right. And then ends in an M. You guys can pick it. How would we figure out a word 
uh, ends in M. Examples to verbs that end in M? It ends in the letter M. That's a loose M, Should do that? Min Yeah, I think they all the dumb ones. She or he is. Who knows what Min is? It's a feeling word. It's a. It's, yeah, it's like, um, oh, Min Wayndom, yeah. Min, if we look at the word, means yeah. good. Yep. Anything Aindom is your, your thoughts, you're having good thoughts, or you she is happy. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, two singular. We want to tell somebody, be happy. No, mm. <laughs> when everybody starts singing it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So for the viewing audience right here, I uh, forget this is being recorded. Uh, we are on Min Wayne Dum. We're on the adding M and we're going to use this pattern right here to tell someone to be happy. Min Wayne Dum is our word. This is where we look for on the chart. And here we go. Min Wayne. Okay, what happens there? We drop the M and we add the N, Min Wayne, done. Uh, be happy. That's to one person. All right, to Pearl, you all be happy. Min Wayne, duh. Mm hmm, me go up, Min Wayne, the muck. Min Wayne, the muck. As versus min wayne dum mo yok. Now you have to go on and do that. Mm -hmm. for oh, I heard it's already in my head. Yep, yep. We'll uh, go through these here in just a second. So, this is um, you all be happy. And let's be happy. We're going to go to the chart and find let's. And the M drops off, and we're going to add n da. Right. Two, one, min, wayne, dun, da. Let's be happy. All right. All right, let's go through it. You be happy. Everyone say, Min Wayne Dunn. Min Wayne Dunn. All right, that's the one person. More than one. You all be happy. Everyone say, Min Wayne the Mook. Min Wayne the Mook. Example number two. Win Min Wayne the Moyuk. Min Wayne the Moyuk. And let's be happy, Min Wayne Dun Da. Min Wayne Dun Da. Let's be happy. And Becky said, Don't worry, be happy. Gago Baba Min Dun Gain. Um, Min Wayne Dun. Right? Gago Baba Main Dungan, Min Wayne Dun. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Be so is the, happy. Is it Gago? Gago is that. Mm -hmm. And there's a word I can't pronounce. Right so after. for uh, don't worry. worry. Be happy. Then we will start whistling. Yeah. <laughs> Gago. You can say that. The, Means don't. The giggle? Yeah, but the other word. Syllable, syllable. Oops. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, oh, my God. Oh, my It is. Oh, my God. Baba main them. Baba. See, there's a short A there, one single A. Ba. 
and then there's ba, yeah. main, main, dumb. So it would be broken down like this: ba, ba, main, dumb. Ba, ba, main, dumb. Your thoughts are wandering, or it means to worry. And then gain, we're going to get into those two. At some point, we're going to do some, um, on, if we look at our chart, if we look at, um, see this 2S and we go over to the negative side, we could have used that as an example, Baba Mandum, Baba Mandum, and uh, we could have put it here in, inside this, Baba Gago Baba Mandung Gain. That means don't worry. Remember, if we go back to this, uh, Baba Mandum, where did it go? Baba Mandum, your thoughts are, are wandering, wandering, or your that means to worry. So you're telling them, don't. Baba main dung, and then the pattern is gain. If we look at that, that's telling it to one person. Okay, go Baba main dung gain. Min Wayne done. Don't worry, be happy. That'll be in the notes. I'll leave that in the notes. But once we get up to that point, we'll uh, talk more about that. All right. I made it through VAIs. Uh, commands, huh? commands, imperatives. Next. Right Next one. You don't. We don't want to do the. Get yeah. into the negatives. Yeah, you're right through a couple negatives. You All right. Do a couple so there was that negative right there. Gago uh, Baba main dungan. And mm -hmm. if we take a look, yep. Sorry, I was gonna say like with the words we used. Could we say? Um, yeah, let's go with the words we used. Don't eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can even throw those things in there. Don't eat yet. You can throw little tiny words in there. Just floaters. Okay. So okay. we did have our word we said, mm -hmm. and we did the positives. We said you eat, you all eat, let's eat. And if we look over at the negatives, the English of this is saying you one person don't eat. The next line would be you all don't eat and then the last one let's not eat okay i don't know when we would ever use that in context maybe, maybe we're waiting for the prayer to happen for the food and um but we would probably throw in like a gago machine gago machine uh we cynic kegon you all let's not eat yet you all not eat don't eat yet but i'll show you a later on but <laughs> That the only I'm trying to think of a context where we would use let's not eat. But if we put mashi in there, yeah, we send it Anyway, let's practice those ones. So we're gonna use this pattern. Gago cane for one person, gago kegon for the you all, and gago sida for uh um let's so let's go through that. So this is a negative uh, VAI. Uh, ends in a vowel. We sin it. All right. Two S. This would be a negative. Negative two S. We're going to tell someone you don't eat. And we're going to put gago in the front. Our word, what's our verb? We sinne. And what does it tell us to add? Cane? Okay. All right. Remember, E sounds like A, so we have cane. Gago we sinne cane. Don't eat. All right. Gago's our don't word. You can tell a kid to gago. It's kind of just gago. Don't. Gago. Gago is a cane. Don't do that. Or, I don't know. We'll learn some more words that go along too. So, a negative 2P, I want to tell more than one person, you all don't eat. Gago. 
we sine ke ke gon. Yeah, that's stuff. Remember that O is like a O. Gego we sine ke gon. Can try say that. Say it with me after I say. Repeat after me. Gego we sine ke gon. All right. I'm having pops off at the end. Gego we sine ke gon. Yes, indeedy. You all don't eat. And then our negative two one, which means let's. We have gego, our verb. We sine. And then what does it tell us to do? Si da. All right. Gego, we sine si da. Let's. Not eat. All right, quick review. You don't eat. Everyone say, Gego we sinikain. You all don't eat. Gego we wait, koi. Gego we sinikagun. Yep. And then let's not eat. Gego we sinisida. And that's where it gets confusing right here. Is we have our word we sinne. Let's let's break this up, I suppose. Let's put our word in here. I'm gonna highlight these so it makes it easier. I like highlighting so we can see the pattern. So there's your pattern and on your chart, Gago Kane, Gago Kagun, and Gago Sida. Alright. No, I was using the word mashe. And that means not at this time yet. Or it's, um, well, yeah, just that. So we can add that in here. Minus 2s. Let's say, Gego Mashi. We sinikain. You don't eat yet. Telling one person. All right, here's how it sounds, everyone. Say, Gego Mashi. We sinikain. All right, here's how it sounds. I'm trying to think of it in my head. Gego Mashi, we sinikain. There you go. You don't eat yet. A sound. We sinikain. Okay. Yeah. And notice in when we said Mashi. Gego Mashi. Those are all short vowels. A. There's a. Short, o, a, e. And the more practice you do with it, it's going to flow even better. Let's try this one. You all don't eat yet. All right, let's try this one. Gego mashi, we sinik, oh wait. Gego mashi, we sinikagun. Yeah, yeah, good job. And then a negative two, one, let's not eat yet. Because the guy is saying the prayer isn't here yet. Gego mashi we sinne. What's the ending? Sida. Sida. Yeah, Sida. All right, let's not eat yet. So on this one, mushy is yet. All right, so let's try that last one. Gego mushy, we sinisida. Yeah, we sinne si da. That's kind of a tongue twister, but yeah, let's not eat yet. So there you go. Mashi. That's a good one. Mashi. Now don't, don't say maji. Okay. You gotta say mashi. Yeah, that's a whole other story, another topic. That's another class. Huh? It's what? What is that? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, Gego Moji. <laughs> yeah, so Moshe. 
It's S H. Maybe they're laughing at the M A S H. You kind of. They thought that they were probably thinking. They all know the dirty words. All right. <laughs> Whew. And so we got through that. We did our positives. We did our vowel endings, our N endings, M endings. That's all you're going to find in the old Ojibwe language, these, these types right here. Uh, we did the positives. We did uh, you, you all, let's. And then we did the negatives. You, let's not. You don't. Uh, you all don't, and then let's not, let's don't, let's don't eat. And then you just, since you guys got that, that first with, um, which, which one did we use? We sin it. It's not, if you know the, ver if, if it ends in a vowel, you, you already know where to go on your chart to look for your negatives for the N endings and M endings. And on the M's, you just follow the rule. The M falls off. And then you do that. So Delayed, we won't get there. We don't need to talk about delayed. So basically, when we're thinking of like vowels, like A, A, O, U kind of thing. Okay, and then any word that ends in the M, and then any word that ends in the M, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, sure. Yeah, because if you look in the dictionary, that's, what, that's all you're going to find in here. So... So off that question, so if it's in, in an E E, you would just take a Oh never never mind. You just have a single Yeah, yeah it's just yep. the end of the yep, yep. Yep, never mind. All right. So that's V A I commands imperatives, I suppose I should say. Where are we at, Ganu? Um the next VTI imperatives? Yeah. All right. VTI imperatives. That is on page number 12. Another chart to look at. And also a chart with different rules. There's a lot of asterisks in here. But uh, once you figure out how to navigate through it, it's... Easy peasy. Um, and I say that lightly. All right, so VTI imperatives. We're looking for um, commands to say the examples were VTI imperatives. So these are verb transitive inanimate. Someone doing something to an object, an inanimate object. An inanimate object. Um, and what about like I use a glass? No, in an imperative form. Of command. Imperative command. Use it. Bring oh, bring it. it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. I want to drink. Drink it. Drink yep. It. Yep. So let's go with that one. Let's try that one. On our chart, the first, um, if we look at that. VTI1 ends in un. And we need to find a. Um, uh, it doesn't end. It does come in down here. Um, where does. I looked at the dictionary. We're looking for VTI ends in un. So here's one. Is your new un? Is your new un? Let's try that one. Is your new un? Is your new un? Is that a command in itself? Yeah, I mean, root does it? For all trans, all transitive verbs, the root word itself that you find in the dictionary, the root word is a command. All of the intransitive, the root word is. Mm. Let's use. I mean, look it up in the dictionary. I'll, I'll let you know what it was. Okay. Uh, Dong Ganun. Touch it. All right. There's a couple examples of uh, VATIs that end in un. And we can take a look at that. And 
if we bring up our uh, dictionary, uh, touch, search, There it is right there. We're going to look for a VTI. There's our VTI. Dong and none. Touch it with your hand. Dong and none. VTI verb. Transitive inanimate verb. Even though it's not in VTI. <laughs> but there's our uh, on word. So let's take a look at the pattern that it tells us to do. If we're going to command one person to touch it, or should we do point? It's up to you guys. Ijinu on. Let's do ijinu on. Point. So it's already there. If you see these uh, triple um, dash points, that's the word. That's the command to one person already. The the word itself is already in uh, second person command form. So if we put that in here, two s. Um. Our word is already ijinu un. Point to it. All right. Now, two p. We go back to our chart. Is telling if it ends in un, drop the n. If there's a star asterisk next to it. That's the rule right here. There's the asterisk. Drop the end and add muk. All right. All right. So let's take a look at our example. E, oops. E, je, nu, uh, we're going to drop the end and we're going to add muk. Now you all point to it. Is you new a muk? Is you new a muk? Now here's a here's a new thing for all you new language learners. There's an apostrophe there, that's called a glottal stop. And so what happens with the word at that point? It all stops. Is you new? Is you new un? Okay, it's kind of like that. So if we look at that word, is you new un? Kind of stops the whole word. Is you new un? And so when you see that, you're going to have that little pause in there. You don't stop and pause for 10 seconds. You just pause real quick. Is your new un? Okay. Now we drop the N and add muk for you all. Is your new a muk? Is your new a muk? You all point to it. All right. And then 2 1 lets our chart tells us to do what? To just add da to the end of that. And now it makes our word ijinu un da. Ijinu un da. Let's, uh, let's point to it. All right. Where's it at? Okay. You point to it. Everyone say, is your new un? Is your new un? Is your new un? Is your new un? All right. You all point to it. Is your new a muk? And let's point to it. Is your new un da? Is your new un da? Using your lips, though. Okay, it's not. Nishinabes, <laughs> Nishinabe, we don't point with our fingers. It's. Kind of disrespectful in a way to point at someone or some. Thing animate, I suppose. You can point to a table. Yeah, yeah that's a, that'd be our example. Is you unda? Let's point to our table. Um, but yeah, use your lips to point. Yeah. Onzam, wasa. Uh, what's our next example on our chart? Let's look. I forgot we have to use this. VTI two. Any words that end in un, in, or ain. VTI to any words that end in un, in, or in. Our example, be doing. Let's use be doing. That ends in un. And be doing. This is ends in un. 
And I worried as B doing. Bring it. And then U and B doing. Bring it. Positive. Two S. We're gonna tell one person to bring it. That's why they want to fight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring it. Yeah, bring it. And do we do anything to this word? Does our chart tell us to do anything? No, it's just the word by itself. Be doing. Bring it. All right. Plus two, plural. You all bring it. Be do yoke. Be do yuk. You all bring it. Say it again. Is that the same with the G too? Mm, oh, is that on there? Yeah. Oh yeah, let's take a look. Show the audience on uh, on the recording. There is an option you can use the G or you can use the yoke. All right. Um, and then the the rule and the asterisk tells us to drop the N. So just showing it for everybody in the virtual world. The rule. So there we drop the N off of here and we added yuk, be dug, or be do yuk. All right. And let's bring it. We're talking about, I don't know, what can we, food, Super Bowl food. <laughs> Two, one. Two, one. B, do, drop the N. Does it tell us to do that for let's? Uh, yeah, I put the asterisk on there. I looked it up. We asked uh, one they said asterisk. Yeah. Asterisk. Yeah. All right. So, so there's an asterisk right now. Drop the N, and then we just put da. So let's put that. B, do, da. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Yeah. And then, so that was our examples of, um, if we take a look at our chart to do, it ends in un, ends in un, inner in. All right. Yeah, let's do some negative imperatives. Same thing if we look over to that second chart. We have gago, and then our verb, and then gain. Gago, our verb, gagon. Gago, a verb, zida. So with our words that we used above, what was our first one? Ijinu'an. Yep, ijinu'an. So... What I'm going to do here in the notes, I'm going to put a plus here. That's positive. Oops. And then I'll just drop down. I'm going to go negative 2s. All right. So we're going to put gago. Our word is ijinu'an still. Gago ijinu'an. And what does our chart tell us to do? On, on the asterisk, we drop the end, but there's no asterisk on this one. So we're just going to add gain to the back of that. We're going to add gain to the back. So now our word looks like this. Gago is your new ungain. Gago is your new ungain. Don't point to it. Maybe fire. Fire, you don't point to the fire. Is that know. respectful? Yeah. Sun, the sun, just different things we don't point to. Yeah. And those are animate things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. You all don't point. Let's look at our chart real quick. Uh, Gago is the pattern. Um, there's no asterisk here, so we're going to add Gago. Gagun to the back. 
Gego Ejenu Ungegon. You all don't point to it. And then the last one, two one, or negative two one. Gego Ejenu Un. What does it say to put on there? Zida. Let's take a look on the chart. I have to show the audience. Anyway, so this one, because it ends in an N, the Z is our connector. Okay, the Z just flows better. So we're going to add Z down. We're going to listen to the example once we put it on there. Z da. Let's not point to it. All right, so let's go over our gagos, our negatives. Everyone say this with me. Repeat after me. Gago ijinu ungain. All right. Gago ijinu ungain. That's you don't point to it. You all don't point to it. Gago ijinu ungaygun. All right. And notice how I kind of. Gago ijinu ungaygun. All right, and our last one, Gago Ijinu Unzida. Oh, Gamino Tago Zim. And then the negative of the ends, the wounds, is just the same way. We can, I'll throw these on here real quick. B, do. Oh, let's look at our pattern. Cain, Kagun, Sida. All right. B do. Oh, we have to put our gago there. Gago, B do. Cain? Gago, B do, Cain. Uh, you don't bring it. Minus 2p. You all don't bring it. Gago. Be do. Kagon. Gago be do kagon. You all don't bring it. I don't know what where you would use that. And then, yeah. Yeah. You all don't bring it. Yeah. 2 1. Don't bring that. Attitude here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gago be do kegon. <laughs> All, right. All right, let's not bring it. Gago be do sida. Gago be do sida. I like that one because it emphasizes the the double vowel system. There's four double vowels in that last word. Let's not bring it. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Double vowels. <clears throat> Review quick, real quick. Gago be do cane. You don't bring it. You all don't bring it. Gago be do kegon. Notice how I went kegon because that E makes a long sound. It's a long vowel. Kegon. Gago be do kegon. And last one, Gago be do si da. So, take a look at this. Nz, that NZ connection there, this flows better. Gago ijinu unzi da. And we don't use si da because it just sounds funny, yeah? Gago ijinu unsi da. We're making a more effort to make the S sound. So we don't use S, we use Z. Because N, NZ kind of is like a nasal. Nzida. Gago ijinu unzida. Nasally. And then sida comes into play when it ends in a, a vowel. Right here. That connection, it flows better. Gago be do sida. That's why the N falls off on this one because the S just flows better. I don't know whose rule that is, but it's cool rule. Or, yeah, I like it. So we've navigated V A I S V T I S. You want to close? You want to uh, before we close? 
uh, review uh, verb types, the transitive verb types and verb forms, and the numbers. Inga Kwejitun. I will try. I don't know how to explain that key. I, I just bring it up. Where's that? Yeah. All right. All right. So we'll review before we close out. You can take a look at your notes if you may have missed anything. So we're talking about V. We're talking about the verb type. All right, verb type. Well, give me an example of VII. Talking about verb type in the back. A box is big. A box is big. Is anything happening to anyone? No. Adamant? Gawain? And so VII is just. I'm losing it. Uh, there's, uh, oh, yeah, on the chart. Look at the chart, Mr. West. All right, VII, just the subject. Nothing's happening over here. There's just a subject. All right. VAI, verb animate intransitive, is what? You can use your notes today, but not on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Uh, v A I example of chair paper. It is expensive. There's a lot of snow. Let's see. These aren't aren't our notes. V A I. She is sitting. Okay. What was the other one? I, I am singing. I am singing. Yep. That's, those are examples of V A I. Um, it's there's just a subject. The subject is doing something to nobody. All right, VTA, verb transitive animate. I am taking it from him. I am taking it from him. Would be a, an example. A subject, we have a subject. I'm trying to think of Gnu's way to do this. Verb transitive, and then there's an object that's happening, and I'm Transitive, so it's happening. I don't know. Did he do the stand-up T-looking thing? Did you guys notice that? Is that what he did? I missed the beginning. So, um, and then the example of VTI, verb transitive inanimate. There's a subject doing something to an object, inanimate object. I have an example VTI that says, "I see the chair. I push the chair." I turn the chair. Can I say I swing the chair? Uh, yep. Anything that you're doing to an inanimate object, you have a subject, I, and your inanimate object is the chair. So, VTI. Um, With your psychic powers? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are verb types. V I I V A I V T A V T I, and then Gnu went over the four verb forms, which are right here: imperative, which means commands. Um, example of a command: You sit down. You sit down. Number two bin. Don't say it like that. Number two bin. <laughs> Teeth clenched. <laughs> All right. So if we look at, we could tell the cats. Eh? Yeah, or the dog. We was anxious. The gajiganchish, animushish, no matter animushish. Um, forms imperative. Who can tell me what imperative? We just did it. Sit yeah. down. Command form. Imperative form, independent form, example of independent. Could you sit down? It say? is the main verb clause. Mm -hmm. Main verb clause. Okay. Um, independent form, I am talking, I am thinking. I don't know what the examples we used. 
You are sitting down. Yeah. You are sitting. Okay. Independent form. Period. Period. It's an independent cell. Uh, uh, conjunct form. This is where I lose it. Okay. I, I might know a lot, but this is where I get. It's a little conjunct form when you have two verbs in one sentence. Does that make sense? Could I say that is not sitting or no? Why? When? Hey, yeah. Let's go back to the hand. What are what are the five? When, while, as, if, that. All right. When, while, as, if, or that. When he's sitting down. When he's sitting down. Dot. 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 Something. 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 I know that she is sitting down. Okay. I know that she is sitting down. Okay. And the last one, change conjunct. We didn't. Oh yeah. The, the one, one the one that is singing, the one that verb turned into a noun. Okay. The ones that are that which is those that are, which is green, the one that is green. And these are in your uh, chart the one, to. Uh, those which are uh, orange. Those okay. That are black. Those which are black. The one that is seen. Change conjunct. All right. What else did we talk about? We noticed that the numbers over and over again. Key. Oh, yeah. All right. The key, one S, singular, me, I, myself. Two, we did a lot of twos with the imperatives, with the commands, two S, you, talking to you. Third person singular, talking about GNU. I'm talking to you guys about GNU. That's he's he or she over there. And, um, Fourth person, I'm talking about Gnu's dog. All right, so let's use that for an example too. Gnu is third person. Let's see. I am talking to you, second person, about Gnu, the third person, his dog. That's fourth person. If that makes more sense, I, I kind of screwed up the 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 first time around, but now it's if. If I go, go do it that way, it's just thinking one, I am talking to you about the third person, Gnu, his dog, which is fourth person. All right. So and then someone else's thing. Whoever the third person is. Or it's something in relation to someone, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. In the, association with someone. So it could be your, your phone. Yeah, and it might not even be mine. It could be the person he was talking to. Mm. He talked to her yesterday. Okay. Yeah. And unspecified, I kind of left that alone. Unspecified, we're not saying you, him, her, or his associate. We're saying somebody beating. It's been eating is being done. Somebody's eating. There's eating is being done. done. People are needing. Oh, yeah. People are they? gathering. Yeah. yeah. No, not they, because you can point at them. Uh, this one you can't really point out. Yeah. It's, it's okay. really unspecified. Unspecified. Like, like me, me, it dim. There is a power. Me, me, it dim. There is a power. The M means people are power, are dancing together. Me, me, Nobody dim. in specific. Yep. Okay. And then 1P is us, plural, us over here, but not GNU. All right. We're, we're, we're going to leave, but not GNU. He's he's gotta stay. So if he was looking at me and talking to me, we yep. are tacos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. But you know <laughs> two one. We did a lot of two ones. Um us talking about we're all of us, let's kind of that was our let's pattern. Two one, two is you all, and one is me. And then uh, they we're including the one I'm talking to. So 
that's Gnu, and that's everybody. You know, we're all, we're all going to leave soon. We're going to leave soon. That would be an example of a, a 2-1. Uh, 2-P, you all. You, plural. You all, plural. 3-P, them, they. All the dogs running around now outside. There's a lot. <laughs> um. And so does that apply to third person too then with the 3-P? They? They, okay. them. Them dog. Yeah, you could say that. Them dogs are running? Yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, them dogs is running. <laughs> 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 old dogs are running. Yeah, those dogs are running. Yeah, those dogs. I don't know how you'd say that in a language. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Them dogs are running. <laughs> yeah, those dogs. I'm gonna say yep. those dogs. Yeah. 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 So, so the slashes are um, on this side of the slash. They is the subject, but if you're gonna use they as the object, you have to say them. Right. Like they saw them. You can't say them saw they. Yeah. yeah. Who who is the one doing it? Who is the who is the uh, subject? Who is the object? Who saw whom? Conjunct. The one that we did our examples and we did imperatives just now. One more thing. Can you go to the dictionary? And I look sure up, can. Uh, uh, you know, look and see if you see any of those conjunct markers on uh, the room. Mark that say conjunct or. Like down here, you there it is right there. See, there's those little numbers. Oh, yeah. Oh. One singular and all zero means an inanimate thing. So, one, I saw it in Don, get in, none. That's in an independent form. Independent, conjunct, change conjunct. So you'll see the abbreviations in the... Um, the more you start playing around with the dictionary, you'll notice these give examples. And the last one is an imperative. Immediate imperative. Right now, this minute. Right now. Biz on. What does zero mean? Zero means an inanimate object. Me, you, him, her, all means it. Oh yeah, if you hover over the top too, it gives you the um, inanimate object number not shown. I don't know. But. So um, moving forward, and when we come back tomorrow, well, I won't be here tomorrow, but um, a lot of navigation. We'll probably do some drilling with the bust into some teams or something, and um, use use your uh, navigation chart. Use the dictionary and a lot of practice yeah. so by the by the end of the uh, training you should be able to use the chart and the dictionary and be able to make complex sentences by the time we're done on day four meaning we can use a uh, conjunct and conjunct change with the main clause uh, uh, imperative or independent and we can make it complex Later. The conjunct and the conjunct change. Um. Oh. Oh. Miigwech, miigwech. Miigwech, ki pe jayek. Oh, ma. Um, I was just thinking too, I was like, I was so used to saying nashke o ma, mm -hmm. but it'd be nashke ish piming or something for birds when birds are flying by. Mm -hmm. Nashke ima. Nashke ima. Yeah. Oh, nashke ima. Oh, okay. They almost sound the same. Nashke ima. Oh. Okay. All right. Give me a minute. Bottom left. Uh, hit the, this one. Little blue uh, spot sign. All right.